All right, welcome to Nerds by Screenlight. My name is Aaron. My name is Vicky. I'm Phil. And I'm Zoe. And today is a double header, a, a twin showing, what, what, triple show, uh, what do you call it? Double, double feature? Double feature. A double feature. There it is, double feature. <laughs> I, know, I know the terms. I know things. Um, so we're talking Fifth Element and Princess Bride today. So it's going to be a big one. We're, 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 I don't think I'm going to split it into two episodes. We just might make this one big, long one. We'll see. We'll let you know. I'll let you know in the precursor to this episode when I go back and edit and I say, well, here's Editor Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it'll be too long. Uh, yeah, I think we'll be okay. I think, yeah. I think we'll be fine. It's going to be fine. So the there's there's two very different movies. <laughs> yes. I, I pointed out to Zoe, one's in the past and one's in the future. Yeah. 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 We, we definitely, accurate. <laughs> we, definitely, we definitely did that well. So the question of the day, or the question of the show is, which character... And there's a variation here. Your favorite character, the one you're most identified with, or like the one that really, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, it's really cool, from Princess Bride and then from um, The Fifth Element. And go ahead and do both of them when, okay. when you start. So okay. we'll go start with, with, we'll start with Vicky. Okay, so my favorite actor is Kerry Elwes. Every, everything he's in, TV show, movie, I start cheering. So that's, his character is my favorite. Like he, he ticks all the boxes, boxes. He's funny, swashbuckling good with accents all the things um i feel like i related more to fezzik i mean not in terms like i'm not a giant like him but in terms of personality of just like wanting to be helpful and like i don't know if we should do that but also being able to rhyme really well i have it's one of my weird talents (laughs) and fifth element um i don't know if i could relate to anybody but bruce willis's character was fun yeah well, and the thing about yeah, we'll talk we'll talk more in depth. But every, I think every movie that Bruce Willis is in, like action movie wise, he's fantastic. The, he, he's the guy that you're just like, okay, yeah, we want we want to hang with this dude. Um, yeah, whatever. So yeah, he's in. His, we'll talk about him in this movie because it's it's kind of fun. All right, Phil, what about you? So for me, uh, in Princess Bride, I think his name is in- Inigo. Mm-hmm. Is that is that Inigo your character Montoya. also? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love him. He was he was great. Um, for the Fifth Element, my favorite has to be Ruby. Chris Tucker's character. <laughs> but who cares? Yeah. No. <clears throat> it's, oh my gosh. So over the top. <laughs> it, Kobe, Kobe. Yeah, it's that role is very interesting in that movie. When, when we get to it, I got some, got some interesting trivia about okay. that movie. And there's oh, there's wow. parts there's parts of the fifth element that we will not really be talking about in detail Fair unless, enough. on this on this show, which is you yeah. know pretty pretty expected for us, is what we how we do. Um, all right, and you you did your do okay, so Zoe. Mine is also Indigo Montoya. Mm -hmm. I love that he fights for what he believes in and he sticks to it. Yeah. And in the fifth element, I'd have to say Diva, the singing alien. Yes. Um, she's just so amazing. Like her voice. I mean, I know some of it was not real, but um, her voice is amazing. It's more real than you think, based on the trivia I read. Yep. Well, for me, I. Hmm. This is really hard. Because I love, I love the fifth element as a movie. I love it with for its for its aesthetic, for everything that it does. I think I most identify as sometimes sometimes as a teacher with the president because <laughs> he is just like yes. I wonder could I could you just could everyone just could could things not go wrong? Could thing and nothing anything things don't go wrong in my job. But as teachers, we and school employees sometimes. You know, we deal with stuff that kind of is just that out of control. We, we're just trying to guide it to its finale, finale, and you know, there's just and you've got a lot of people who just don't want that to happen. It's it's or it's, just listening. Yeah, you've got 20 seconds to tell me your story, and then we have to move on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's been me. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's that, and then in the Princess Bride, um, I like M- Billy Crystal's character. Uh, yes. Ma- Magic, whatever his name is. Um, Miracle Max. Yeah. Miracle Max. Because it's it's quintessential Billy Crystal. It's just the he, he's, he's he's got he's in there for a brief moment, but when he's there, you yeah. remember him. You mm-hmm. remember his hey, he's mostly dead. <laughs> There's a difference between mostly dead and, <laughs> and dead. All and, dead. <laughs> and all dead. And so he just I love that uh, just that and it's a lot of that eighties aesthetic as mm-hmm. well, because it's just those characters that you're like Oh man, like those those are those are the world those are the wonderful, wonderfully weird and wacky characters that the eighties movies just really, really leaned into. So. Totally. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, when we come back, we're gonna we're starting with Princess Bride. Um, so who ha- I've seen Princess Bride. Yeah, a bunch of times. Phil, it's your first time. Yeah, I'm the one that has Go, not seen it. Going in blind. So we're gonna be we're gonna be looking at Phil for some some curious reactions and see how he feels about I certain hope this parts. This made you less angry than Aaron's movie. <laughs> I wasn't angry at all. 
<laughs> Phil, it's a feel good Phil, movie. Phil was calm, cool, and collected <laughs> on the Phil up on the Phil angry scale. On the angry, ooh, angry Phil. We'll call you a, the angry Phil scale. He was he was zero. He was he just kind of yeah. chilling. Shout out to AVGN for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, for if you're yeah. wondering what AVGN, it's Angry Joe. Um, nope. The, a- angry video game. Oh, nerd. Angry, yeah. So there's okay. James okay. Rolfe. So, yeah. So Angry yeah. Video Game Nerd. There's also the Angry Angry Joe show, which I watch for video game stuff like that. Yeah. But so we've got our own Angry Phil. Yeah. Uh, but he's not as uh, angry as Joe is, or probably not as angry as AVGN. No. Definitely not. No. 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 <laughs> He's scary. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, we come back. We will dig into Princess Bride and then the, uh, the Fifth Element and Yay. everything all together. So strap in, grit, get yourself some tea, coffee, or as we're doing right now, we're doing some snacks. And for those of you in the audience who are always, who have and justifiable concerns about the sound of us eating and the ASMR that we tried and played with earlier on in this show, uh, we will be moving our microphones from our faces when we are snacking to avoid creating that uncomfortable. We're trying uh, very hard. We're, we're, we yeah, are. We're working at it. So yes. again, the microphones are movable. We can Test just, experiment just today. move around and then we'll come back. <laughs> All right. So he'll be, we'll be right back after this. Get nerdy with me. Talk nerdy to me. Get nerdy with me. All I really need for you to do is just please. I can stop. All right, welcome back to Nerds by Screenlight. My name is Aaron. My name is Vicky. I am Angry Phil. <laughs> and I'm Zoe. <laughs> but not today, though. <laughs> today. Today, he's just a jolly old... I was going to say jolly, yes. He's sitting in the, For yeah. those of you, you can't see it, but he was just like, I'm, you know, jolly, and Doing just a little, a little chair dance in his chair there. <laughs> so there we go. Phil is, Phil is a, jo- a jolly old elf? That doesn't sound No. Right. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jolly Phil. Jolly yeah. Phil versus Angry Phil. Yeah. There we go. All right. So The Princess Bride, um, I will freely admit that I did not watch this movie because partially I ran out of time, but also partially because I wanted to kind of lean into y'all's experience as you watched it and what you saw and what you felt and what you experienced. Yeah. Um, the to, to be to be fairly transparent, um, The Princess Bride is one of the most... One of the greatest cult classics yeah, of yes. all time. Like it's like this, the Wizard of Oz of our generation. That's I would, what we call that several times. I would say even higher because it it has it has reached across generations. Yep. To where you know kids are getting introduced to it now, and they're like it just it has that it hits everybody. It's mm-hmm. not like it's just oh it's only the '80s kids or the '90s kids. No, this is everybody who watches this um, enjoys it because it's so timeless. There have been a lot of memes mm-hmm. coming out recently about Princess Bride, like all over social media. And so. while I was watching it, I've noticed, like, um, especially like in video games, a lot of video games and other media uh, like to use this movie and put Easter eggs in it, huh. like uh, the rodents of unusual size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The is in, is in, uh, yeah, the the Russes, Yeah, they're in. Um, there's a if you have the Wild Westland perk on in Fallout New Vegas, really? you you will randomly be attacked by a rodent of unusual size. <laughs> and it, and I was watching, it, I was like, oh, so that's where that came from. And then the whole like prepare to die thing that's been like mm-hmm. referenced over and over in so many video mm-hmm. games. I was like, oh, so now I understand where all these things came from. A lot of them came from Princess Bride. Yep, a lot, and that's. That's a phenomenon in both media and all kinds of media when you have something that is so instilled in the cultural conscience that it just it echoes it continues to, to reach and to be a part of the cl- it's it's similar to what with like Shakespeare with Shakespeare and all the things that he wrote and the words and the sayings he came up with that it still is a part of our, our vernacular it still sticks with us um, even though some people don't find the value in Shakespeare but I Shakespeare's still, the best he's, 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 he's better than, he's, you know the younger generation. Get get into it. It's worth it. It's it worth really digging is. into. Well, if you need if you need to be convinced, you need to watch Kenneth Branagh in Hamlet. I mean, any, anything anything in Kenneth Branagh. I thought the Mel Gibson one was pretty good. Mel Gibson his his Hamlet was good, but Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet is just exquisite. I mean, Kate Winslet is in it. Mm-hmm. She's yep. She can't do wrong. I watched I watched the final the final the final scene on. I grabbed it on YouTube because I was like I was just I was kind of hitting the Kenneth Branagh edits and all that stuff, and I found I found the end scene and. It's just, it is, it's brilliant. Like, it's just so, it's, I mean, it's awful when they all die and everyone dies. That's how Shakespeare works, but it's yeah. absolutely really, it's really fun to watch. All right, so how does this movie open? <laughs> On a oh. video game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to fit, maybe Aaron, you can help, well, you didn't watch it recently, but. Right. What it was the eighties. The movie was made in like eighty seven. Yep. He's not on a Nintendo. He's got like a little joystick. 
and he's playing a baseball game with graphics better than the original Nintendo. So I was trying to figure out like what could he possibly be playing. I will. Do I know it. it's a real game, but the sound is not part of the game. The right. sound was added later on. Okay, so yeah, edited in. That makes sense. Game played in Princess Bride. Yeah. If my computer will hook up, hook up, catch up with me. Um, so Hardball is a video game for the Commodore 64. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was the Commodore. At the scene at the beginning of the film. Now, those of you who have no idea what the Commodore 64 system is, <laughs> nope. um, it is old school. I don't. I never owned one. It was before my a little bit before my time. Way before mine. Yeah, I never did. <laughs> yeah, so the Commodore was one of the original video games. And the fact that you look at that and it looks pretty good, mm -hmm. um, it was like we, we've, we, we've come a long way, but sometimes we, we haven't come a long way with graphics. We, <laughs> well, like there's something to be said for the classics. You know, yep. like yeah. the original Super Mario Brothers. <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so we <laughs> and he's sick. He's staying home. From yep, staying yeah. home from school. And so Grandpa gets called to come take care of him. Coolest Grandpa I've ever seen. For real. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely got that going on. And now, then... can we consider this a Christmas movie? I was wondering that. <laughs> Because on the background, oh he's got like Santa Claus on the wall, and he's also got like a Santa Claus figure. I'm mm -hmm. like, this is a Christmas movie, officially. Everything's a Christmas movie. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Christmas is taking over, apparently. Yeah. yeah. If, mm -hmm. if it takes place during Christmas, it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> well, now the whole movie's Jurassic we've just, World. We just destroyed, destroyed everything. Yeah. Oh, no. 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 It takes place during Christmas. <laughs> You've the, the the, listen, if far. we're going to say this, we have to include that in The this. line must be drawn here, as Captain <laughs> Sean. Luke Picard would say, "Your holes in your argument. I knew it was <laughs> you're you're it's, you're rejecting my reality and inserting your own. own. Yep. <laughs> Reject your reality and insert my own." So we start the story, and it, it what I love about this movie is is that it plays back and forth between the grandson and grandfather, and then the story that yeah. we're being told. Yeah, and so it's 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 not it's it's it's. It's almost meta enough to play with that. So mm -hmm. we're, we're, mm -hmm. we're keenly aware that this is not a real story. This is not a real event. This is told from a book. Yeah. And there's not really, you know, whatever going on. It's, it's, it's pretend. But it does make it a lot more fun because every time something happens and the kid goes, what? <laughs> yeah. Is this a kissing book? Yeah. <laughs> you skip ahead to the, oh the pirate part or whatever. Yeah. It lined up so perfectly with Phil's reaction, though. So. Yeah. Like, as soon as he reacted, the kid would come back and react. And I'm like, yeah. oh, my gosh. <laughs> Like, is this a kiss? Yeah, is this a kissing movie? Mm -hmm. yep. Jump to the fire swamp, please. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, the, the it was written by William Goldman. And William Goldman is one of the great writers of Hollywood. And you can actually read this book. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah, yeah it, was, okay. It, was, it, was, it was originally written by William Goldman. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to choke. I'm like, <laughs> don't choke. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Aaron. So much for the ASMR violation we tried to avoid. It's a little fifth element. <laughs> oh, man. And I knew it as soon as I was, took a drink. I was like, oh, this isn't You gonna... always know. I know. Yeah, you just you regret everything, and you just wish you could just go back five seconds or something. Anyway, so William Goldman is a legit like author. I, mean, I think he's – I'm not sure if he's still alive. We're going to find out. We're going we're gonna to do our research on the fly like we always do here. Um, yeah, no, he I mean, died in 20, 2018 at the age Aww. of 87. But, yeah, he was, he was really – and he – like his – he was a part of this movie. Like, obviously, it was his screenplay – um, and his, there's a whole, actually, I think there's a whole story that he's written a autobiography of the, the Princess Bride and how it came to be and all these things and so. Yeah, it's an interesting story. Yep. So we start out with um, the whole story about the farmhand and the as you, as wish, you wish. As you wish. As you wish. Okay, so yeah. the way that you feel feel about Heath Ledger is the way I feel about Carrie Elwes. Well, I was watching. Look this... at him in this movie and in this scene. <laughs> it's beautiful. I, after <laughs> watching the movie, I understand your uh, comparisons between the two. Yep. yep. Yeah. Those beautiful eyes. They're very similar. They're very. He's got to get rid of that mustache. I'm sorry, Vicky. That's, that's true. <laughs> okay. I, you know, and I'm not a mustache person, but to me, Carrie Elwes just can't. <laughs> He's the only one that can pull it off. That's right. He can't do no wrong. Yep. Nope. Mm -hmm. Uh. So yeah, he's. Well, when you think about it, like his the way that Carrie in this in, at at this age, when Carrie Ellis was like, it was a similar kind of char charisma that he had, similar to Heath Ledger. He could yeah. he could look and he could make a face. He could do a thing. He could do it. He could basically manipulate the audience. And he still can in his age. Like he mm -hmm. was in Stranger Things mm -hmm. recently, and he still got it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> he's a, he's a classic classic actor for sure. Uh, so we where there's a lot that happens here. So the whole thing. The, like this, there's the plot, the plot thing on uh, the. 
Yes. On, you know, on Wikipedia is like, there's just so much that happens. So we've got the situation where he's, as you wish, the two fall in love. Wesley leaves to seek the fortune overseas so they can marry. However, he's presumed dead after a ship is attacked by the dread pirate Robert. Who was a real pirate. What? Yes. A very famous par- pirate from the Caribbean. Huh. Yep. So there you go. Interesting. I didn't there know that. <laughs> so then, five years later, um, my favorite character name, Prince Humperdinck. <laughs> Who wears a dress the whole time. Yes. It, oh. I called him something different. <laughs> <laughs> the following is not appropriate for children. Our parents have been, and children are people of the age of 17. I always have one every episode. Guys. Parental advisory. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't speak. We will just imagine yeah. imagine a middle schooler watching this movie. Yes. And, <laughs> and, and what he, they, he or she would come up with uh, in relation <laughs> to what they would put. Yeah. What I love about this movie Perfect is... Perfect analogy, yeah. If, yeah <laughs> go into your middle school life and sit there for a second and go, oh, oh yeah, that's what he was going to say. <laughs> so what I love about this movie is every single actor in this movie or actors in this movie is just on fire. They're yes. nobody phoned in their, 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 their portrayal. Mm-mm. Every single moment is just you... like yeah. and, having, and again, it's been a classic movie for so long. You wait for those moments. You mm-hmm. wait for those characters to show up because you're like, he's coming, he's coming. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so F- Prince Humperdinck um, decides to make her forcibly betrothed to him. Um, so she, before the wedding though, she is kidnapped by three outlaws. Yeah, her both poor lost circus performers. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so a small Sicilian man named Viz- Vicini, oh, a giant Greenland, <laughs> Greenland, Greenlander named Fezzik, and a Spanish fencing master named Inigo Montoya. He's the best. Who seeks revenge against six, six finger man who murdered his father? Yeah. So, why that? What there, a troop! It, it was never explained why because they kidnap her because they want to get like money from her. No, they're she, trying to start a war between two like countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> yep. it. We should also say that uh, what's his name F- starts with F. Physic. 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 Yes, that is Andre the Giant. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And he is definitely Andre the Giant in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever want to do a deep dive into a real interesting story. Honor the Giant story is equal parts heartening, but also heartbreaking. Yeah. Because he dealt with giantism, which is a, a, where, and people, and this happens where they have to, they, their pituitary, pituitary gland either doesn't do enough or does too much. And so for Andre the Giant, it did too much. He's yeah. seven foot four. Wow. And he was a heavy man. He was like, a big dude. There's, there's one moment in the, in the movie where he like goes to grab, he grabs the lady. Yeah. Buttercup like by the back of her neck and his hand just. Yeah. Fits around in her entire. Like, yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> so yeah. There's a, there's massive. A, there's a sweet background thing about that. There would be times that she would be cold outside filming and he would use the hand to cover her like to help Aww. keep her warm. Yeah. He's like a gentle giant. Basically. And he was. The reality, I mean, you, you watch him on WWE, you see, I mean, he looks, he's a big man. He can be scary. Now I was but, reading in the trivia, he would call everybody boss yeah. just to Aww. kind of like, because yeah. he towered over them and he wanted them to feel more comfortable with yeah. him. Andre the Giant was a really cool guy. He, he ha- his story is heartbreaking because of how, you know, he didn't, he didn't live a full life because of what happened with his health and everything like that. But in this movie, you get, I think you see the true Andre the Giant. You see the care, the kindness, but you also see the comedy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, have some, I have some favorite moments of Andre the Giant as we go. So then, so they're, 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 they're the jokes, the puns that uh, Fezzik makes up, or they, they fight about the p- p- puns as they're sailing away. And the Fezzik, final. Are there rocks ahead? If they are, we'll all be dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anybody want a peanut? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> it's literally how my brain works. I love it. But it's done in such a way that it's hilarious. Like you're just laughing. You're going, oh my goodness, they're so doomed. This is not going to be a good mission. No, <laughs> no. So they get to the. Cliffs of Insanity, they climb up the cliffs, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But someone's been well, following them. Yeah, well, someone's been uh, following them. Physic is climbing up, and everyone's just hanging on to him. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> and he's like, go faster. I'm like, he has three other guys on him. Yeah. <laughs> so they climb up the, fi- the Cliffs of Insanity, and so they've been tracking, you're right, they've been tracking this man who's been following them. Yeah. And inconceivable. Right, inconceivable. Yeah. You, keep, you keep using that word. I do not think you know what it means. <laughs> Again, that's so many quotable lines, right? And you'll see it. Like, you'll see stuff where people will say something in a movie or a, or a book or even a game, video game. And they're like, you keep saying that, right? I don't, I don't. I mean, there's, these are memes. Right, Where yes. people will reply to, like, tweets. You keep using that word. I don't I think, think it means what you think it means. <laughs> so, yeah, he, uh, they get up to the end. So then we have the fight. Um, 
Okay, that's the most. Well, no, first is the poison, right? No, no it's first the fight. Is the fight. Mm-hmm. First is the fight. And that's the most epic sword fight. And I yes. love, I love Amazing. how like I love how Inigo is like waiting for him to climb up to the to, to the top. He's like, I would throw down a rope to you, but you probably wouldn't accept it from me. And then he like pro- he swears on something, and then he throws a rope down, and he's like, I swear I will not kill you until you get to the top. Yeah. And so he like, like helps him confident. up, and yeah. then they have <laughs> then they have like a heart to heart conversation. Yeah. And it's like, did, what? <laughs> okay. And, Why are we and, fighting? <laughs> yeah. And then the sword fight, which is awesome, that goes on for like, it felt like 10 minutes. Well, Indigo's <laughs> trying so hard and mm-hmm. um, Wesley is like barely yeah. moving. Yeah. He's like, he's like, uh, I know something you don't know. I'm not left-handed. <laughs> and then he switches to his right hand and then the other guy, Wesley. Yeah. I called it. It was like, that's Wesley following them. Yeah. At first, I called him Zoro. I wondered when you fig- when you were gonna when did you figure out that it was Wesley? Did you right figure off the right, away? I mean, right away? Right away. Yeah, his eyes. Are- yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then and yeah, and then Wesley's like, "Well, I know something you don't know. I'm not left handed either." In your face. <laughs> and it's like you said, it's a really epic fight. Like mm-hmm. it is, it's not over the top. No, but it is done in such a way. Again, this movie was really. The way that they just kind of, they move you through it, like you are you are a viewer and you are experiencing it, and they it's it's gentle, but it's kind of kind of curious and kind of sarcastic, and you're you just enjoy like it's like a warm blanket, like it's the movie you need yeah. to watch when you're having a day where you just want to punch everyone in the throat, you know, you just or a day of, when you're not feeling well, oh yeah, or, like, or that, like, <laughs> just like it's a good comfort less movie, less violence, more sickness, you know. <laughs> Whatever the spectrum is you're on, <laughs> this movie will help. It's, it'll save your it'll save your life. It'll change your world. And so, yeah, it's just, I love the fight because it's so, again, it's practical. And it's classic. It reminds mm-hmm. me of the old, like I grew up with like the black and white Zorro episodes and, yeah. mm-hmm. and things. And the um, their sword master, he also did the Lord, the Lord of the Ring movies. He did the choreography with the sword fight and things. He's done a lot of stuff. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah. Yep. So the fight ends. And he doesn't kill. No, and he spares oh, yeah. him. He does. He, he knocks him out. Doesn't yeah, he, he knocks yep. him out. And he tells him sleep, sl- you know, sleep sweetly or whatever, or something like that. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, this guy really is nice. Yeah, he really is kind. Doesn't he? Does he fight with Fezzik at this point, or has that fight already happened? No, he fights with Fezzik yeah. next. Fezzik is next. next. <laughs> and so they fight, and you get to see Andre the Giant's rare, like rare power, like how much he can... Like the really... way he throws those punches or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, at first he's like... Uh... He tells him to like hit him with a rock or whatever. Like mm-hmm. hide and hit him. And he's yeah. like, I, I was not very that. sportsman. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and then, sweet. yeah. And then when Wes, Wesley comes and he, that rock just explodes, <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're in trouble, dude. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, I didn't have to miss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you see Wesley's just, I think it's the one of the few moments in the film he just looks terrified. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I may have bitten off more than I can chew at this point. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But he eventually does get the better of. Of, of Fezzik. And he just knocks him out too, basically. Yeah, he just knocks him out. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I love it too. Classic movie making when they're like slamming, he's slamming Wesley up <laughs> against the rock. rock. Yeah. You can tell and hear that that rock is hollow. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, not real. <laughs> that's definitely stage. <laughs> yeah. Stage rocks. It's not in there. <laughs> yeah. But I like how it just kind of, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Oh, yeah. Like the movie is not like, you know, Jean Va- Jean-Claude Van Damme in The Princess Bride. It's just like, yeah. no, this is a fun little movie. Yeah. Not and he's of- talking about, I battle gangs for local charities and I'm used to doing groups instead of one <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> It's just, I love it. It's so, it's so. There's just, there's just enough whimsy that you're like, okay, it, this is going to be fine. Everyone's, but there is that nature of there are some very bad men, which we're going to get to. So then we get to the, the poison last. scene. Yeah, this is brilliant. <laughs> it is so brilliant. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, it's. <laughs> well, because he's basically like, you think you're so smart and you're going to outsmart me, but you're really not. Yeah. Yeah. So he meets up with. Um, the with him and then he's they, and they the, the the back and forth of like well I switch this and I switch this and I switch this that it's, was annoying. <laughs> I'm sorry that guy. I just he's a, him, he's obnoxious. Yeah, I wanted him to shut up so quickly. <laughs> well, like, you don't get him very long in the movie. <laughs> yeah, thankfully he's and the he's only- usually a good actor, but gosh, when he's sitting there talking about I can't take this because you would do that, and yeah. then I can't take mine because they did that. <laughs> And then I can't take yours because blah, 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 blah. And just, it went on too long. But I love his reaction. Well, which one are you going to choose? And I love Wesley's like, you're just stalling now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's the only character, at least of that group, that dies. Yeah. Yep. 
Everybody else lives except for him. Mm-hmm. And I think it, it, I like it because, I mean, he wouldn't have really have served a point in the rest of the movie if That's he had fair. lived. Mm-hmm. And he was really a bad dude. Like, he was yeah. threatening to, like, stab her and kill the princess. Like, he was, he was, he was the leader. He was the guy who was putting this whole crazy plan to put two countries at war against each other. So yeah. he didn't, he didn't care about the deaths of anybody. He's just like, I just want to, ha ha ha. He's a bully, too. Yeah. Yes. A bit of a bully. Yeah. So he gets, he, he gets his end. And then there's the moment of realization where she's like, I think she just does she push him down the she hill? She does! <laughs> and he just goes, as, as you wish. wish. <laughs> kind of deserved it, and though. And then the best part is she, she jumps, jumps down. <laughs> just dives off a cliff. you got to say your yeah, reaction. Uh, yeah, so my reaction to this was, uh, I, I looked at Zoe and I was like, now, when I was younger, I would roll down hills. I've never thrown myself <laughs> Down a hill like that. That's true love. Head over yeah. hills. I would lay down sideways and. Oh, don't, don't, yeah, doesn't, yeah. As they roll, as she rolls, she doesn't stick. Doesn't go like. Ow, ow, ow. Yep. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure they added that in and yeah, cut later. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it just it makes you chuckle, being like, oh. <laughs> and then they like yeah. end up in each other's arms or something yeah. down at the bottom. But I'm like, how did you not notice him? <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I think perhaps if we were to go to metaphorical or rhetorical here, that sometimes the girl doesn't know what she actually has in front of her, and she's so blinded. But to be fair, she was told that he he died. Right. And that this was the man who had killed her. He killed right. him. The I mean, he laid that him. on thick. Uh-huh. For sure. Like, yeah. yes, I killed him, but you're him. <laughs> yeah. I think, well, I think he was trying to, like, keep her from knowing, because if she knew who he was and tipped it off, that would change. And I wonder if he was testing her, too, because Mm. he was, I kind of wonder if he was genuinely like, wait, you just got engaged? Yeah. Like, you don't love me. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of wonder if there was a little bit of, like, he loved her, but he's also like. Yeah. That was my assumption, or analysis, too. It's like, he's testing her. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. Uh, So then, we, they. (laughs) Fire swamp. (laughs) Fire swamp. Can we like go back to Miss? What is his name? Humperdinck. Yeah, Prince Humperdinck. How he can like figure out everything by the sand. He could tell their whole fight which way they went. Like, oh yeah, he goes because yeah, they're make a good detective. Him. Yeah, and they're like, oh, well, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened, and as he slept here, and then he was like, blah, blah, blah. it's like, I'm like, dude. <laughs> well, so here's the thing: like mo- movies that like in this movie, it's kind of fun and yeah. kind of fun, cool, and I think it, again, it's kind of making fun of like in movies where you see like a tracker going and I see the path of this and this was happening here and. This just kind of just dispels with any kind of skill, and yeah. he just he just apparently can do this. This is his default. Right. He is an absolute tracker with ten out of ten skills. And I, it's in any other movie, it probably would have felt like an expositional dump, or it would have been like, why are we reviewing this? But he he adds more to the flavor of the fight because there is this kind of like, ooh, what's happening? Oh, what's happening? What's going on? So I don't know. It, it works in here. It works in this movie. Um, but yeah, but he's an irritant. Humperdinck and everybody else are just. Bad men. Mm-hmm. Very terrible men. Agreed. So we get to the fire swamp. Oh, the fire swamp. Yeah, I love the fire swamp. I, it's it's such a fun little, I like... I just love how he keeps picking her up <laughs> every time the fire... Yeah, because uh, I look at Zoe, I'm like, it's like a video game. You don't hear the audio cue? Get out the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does just pick her up and... He... <laughs> well, it is kind of established in the movie. She's... she's Buttercup is great. Mm. She's not the brightest. No. <laughs> but she's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's probably grown. I mean, you think about it, she's grown up on that farm for most of her life. Yeah. Probably she not very not educated. She, she hasn't traveled a lot. You know, she's just she, all she's done is errands around the house. And well, she made him do all the errands around the house. Yeah, she made him do all the hard work. Touch so me she, that picture. Yeah, she was like having that little like princess kind of vibe going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so yeah, she's she's got this. So in this in this situation, it's not that she's a damsel in distress. It's that she's never really had to get her hands dirty. Yeah, she's always just kind of like, oh, ah, ha, ha, ha. and now it's like, well, now you're in the fire swamp, lady. Welcome you to the. Need welcome to, to do the... something about the RUS. Yeah, well, hit so, him with the stick. So here's, I, I love it. She, he's like, he's like, okay, well, what's next in the fire swamp? Oh, well, the ROSS, the what? The rodents of unusual size. She's like, who? And she's like, oh, they're they're not a big deal. And all of a sudden, rawr! <laughs> yeah, he says that right as he's staring at one. Yeah. I think he's probably he must be trying to like reassure her yeah. and also move away from them because he <laughs> definitely is like. Ooh. Also, want to say this movie and a lot of movies growing up as. Uh, kid and yep. watching movies and stuff they made me think that quicksand would be a way no kidding. more yeah. no real life kidding. problem than but, what it actually yeah. is. right between, we all went through that i between did this and the never ending story quicksand was like a That's life-threatening and most cartoons yeah. and swiss stanley robinson yeah so we how, so much quicksand yeah. how many times have you seen quicksand in real life never 
Exactly. <laughs> I think once, but I didn't step. Like so, it is real. Really? But. Did you see quicksand? Yeah, but I was like, I'm not even. Princess Bride taught me not to go. Okay, I, but I tangent. Where did you see quicksand? Oh gosh, I don't know. I was a kid. I'd have to ask my dad. Okay. It was a long time ago. So yeah. the 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 connection to the narrating story, which I think we've actually done for Nerds for Screenlight at some point, we talked about it. Yeah, we have. So there's an episode. There's a part of that movie where the horse dies. It's awful. A lot. The his horse is, and it, what people talk about in that that scene is as a kid watching his horse. Because what happens? He's in the he's in there. He's in the swamp of whatever it's called of disbelief or something. Swamp the swamp of sorrow or something. And the idea is, is that you can't let yourself become too sorrow or turn yourself over to that. You have to remain hopeful and and have that. And his horse doesn't. And so his horse gets swallowed up. In the quicksand, in the swamp of whatever it's called, <laughs> it's pretty and, brutal, and it's absolutely heartbreaking because the movie doesn't shy away from it; it just keeps on going. And so, kids, Oop. like grown-ups who have watched that movie now and have talked about their experience, that was a real traumatic experience watching this horse get swallowed up and for real, and not be able to get out because he didn't have enough hope. He didn't, he wasn't able to keep that. Yeah, so, very sad. at least in this one, that goes straight down. Yeah, like, I mean, just... <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and, and they, he gets and, her out, and yeah. they get her out, and everything like that, and it works out. But yeah, it's so, you're right. Quicksand was a far bigger threat mm-hmm. uh, in 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 our in our where did ch- that come from? In our childhood, who started I, that? I'm, I'm sure there's a reason, but I'm also I, it probably was an easy and convenient plot thing to use. I almost feel like was there quicksand in the labyrinth too? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. Okay. Not that I remember. Okay. Never mind. But yeah, oh, geez. it was it featured <laughs> in a lot of television places, shows though. and movies. So there you go. There's the quicksand threat that never really. Uh, came around to be a part of things. I mean, it's even in Mario. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So much quicksand. Yeah. It traumatizes. <laughs> yeah. We have, we, have, we have quicksand PTSD. We need to, we need to get some, get some, find, some, find some work about that. Um, okay, so now... So the, the well, ROS, after the he wrestles with it, basically, and then puts it on one of the fire triggers. <laughs> and so the ROS <laughs> goes on fire and lights, and then they continue on with their journey. Um... So I got to track back here. So, um, great. Okay. So then they, they catch up with them. Apparently, I guess they make it out of the fire swamp. Yes. Humperdinck like meets them. Yeah. So they get out of the fire swamp and then Prince Humperdinck captures them. Um, she agrees to return with Humperdinck if he promises to release Wesley. Yeah. He secretly orders his statistic vizier, Count Rugen, uh, to take Wesley to the torture chamber. And, and before yeah. he gets knocked out, we notice his right hand and has six, six fingers. fingers. <laughs> like, yep. And then, of course, now Whoa. we're like, yeah, he's, yeah, he looks at him. He's like, there's someone looking for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And so he gets mad. <laughs> fun, fun trivia fact. Um, when they filmed this, Wesley was like, oh, just hit me. So that's a real hit, and he had to go to the hospital. <laughs> oh my gosh! Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why would they allow this? It's the '80s. They did crazy things. And Carry on, West. That's too far. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't think it'd be that big of an issue, but you know, that didn't work out so well. Uh, um, okay. So he um, he beat, gets knocked out. He notices obviously, and then so Buttercup threatens suicide if the wedding, ha- wedding happens. Um, he then falsely promises a lot. Yeah. <laughs> this keeps coming up in our movies. Uh, yeah. And I had totally forgotten about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's an interesting plot device. I think in the 80s, that was just like, we, there wasn't, a, again, it's the same thing we talked about the apartment. Like, suicide conversation about suicide has not, was not a part of our, like, general cultural conversation totally. from the 60s to the now. Well, this was this movie was in um, the 80s. 87 was when it was released. And so sometimes I think we look at it through the lens of 2024 and go, oh my gosh, why did they put that in there? Well, it would just be a natural reaction for a character like, I'm not, I'm not getting married to you. You're a horrible human being. Yeah. I know how bad you are to people. I would rather not live to experience that. <laughs> like, and so it wasn't, it wasn't ever like meant to be like, oh, well, this is, you know, th- we're promoting this. It was just like, this was... Right, no, of this course was, not. This, this, was the, this was the character solution. Uh, so... I didn't get the dark feelings from this movie that I did the Joker in Apartment. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. You know? it's, it's, very, it's very farcical, more kind of... Kind of, kind Fairy of, tale, kind of light. Yeah. Yep. When I was telling Phil, I was like, well, in a way, that's like the only thing she can control is her own life. Yeah. Yeah. Like, literally. So, mm-hmm. I mean... So then Humperdinck's, we, re- we revealed that Humperdinck's real plan is to start a war with the neighboring country of Gilder by killing Buttercup and yeah, Gilder She's Ford. a pawn and a so bigger plot he had device. secretly hired Vincini, Vincini to do this, and then Vincini obviously got foiled by the Dread Pirate Roberts, and so that necessitated him to find and track down what was going on, all that kind of stuff. Um, she re- promises to go with Humperdinck. Um, 
And he says, oh, I'll find Wesley. I'll find Wesley. I'll send four ships in oh. four different directions. Yeah. Yeah, right. Sure. Anyway, well, he <laughs> yeah. doesn't. He doesn't. Um... The torture thing they do on Wesley. Oh, my gosh. is intense, right? Yeah. Like, the first what? time I watched that, I was like, what are we about to see? Yeah, it's pretty intense. You uh, just feel shaking his head. It's a suction device. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> they stick it on his temples, on his ch- chest, yeah. <laughs> and on his abs. Yeah. And you find out, like, it's a suction device. And I'm like, are they milking this man? Like, <laughs> what's going on? And then no. it's like, no, they're they're <laughs> sucking the life from him. Yeah. They're sucking the I life was like, oh okay. oh, okay. That is a goofy device. <laughs> yeah, that's goofy. <laughs> it, it does it, it when you when you think about it, when you step out of the, the moment, you're just like, that was your solution? Yeah. That was how you're going to portray that? That was the idea from the set, the designer and well, the That's kind of how this movie is. There's some goofy elements to Definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Well, and so it, the Count, whatever his name is, Rogan, he's like, he's very like... He's sadistic. Oh, mm-hmm. he's bad. His The way he talks to Wesley and the way he says, oh, you do, 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 do. It's like this is very clinical. And how clinical. do you feel about yeah, that? Yeah, how do you oh feel about that? It's like I have a, de- a deep and interest in, in pain. Yeah. I'm studying it extensively. Yeah. Uh-huh. Lord Elmer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there, there, are, there are people that worked at the Holocaust. You get along with them great. Yeah. It was, it was pretty. It's yeah, pretty well, okay. Then, okay. Yeah. When they mentioned that, I looked at Zoe. I was like, what is, what did he say the Holocaust? What, what is he talking about? And I guess you just explained it to me. I didn't realize, I didn't put the two connections. Well, there's, together. there's like a doctor I can think of involved in the yeah. Holocaust. So there's, there is significant historical context um, within the actual events of the Holocaust in World War II um, and the Germans and the Nazis and science and yep. scientists who did... Um, unethical things. Uh, unethical is putting it gently. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, um, there, is, there was some intense and brutal and inhumane and war crime level um, experiments that were carried out by mm-hmm. by that. Um, they're actually they did they had a fascination with experiments on twins. Yep. For yep. A varying reasons, and there's actually um, oh, I forgot her name already. Um, her name is Eva Core. Hold on, I, I can tell your name, but I have her face in my head. So she, we'll take we'll take a slight a slight Eva. Hold on, hold on, I gotta find her name. Forgive. Forgive. Yeah, Eva Kaur. So she passed away um, in the last couple of years, but she actually has a museum that she has made. She made called the Candles Holocaust Museum, and so her sister, her twin sister, died, I believe, in the Holocaust experiments, um, and she was experimented on as well. Um, her big deal, which to this day is controversial to no end, she made a. She forgave the Nazis and actually sought out Nazi SS officers and people who had been involved in her camp that were still either alive or in prison and said, you have my forgiveness for what you did. Oh. And it like that, that was a lot of people's reactions was like, what are you doing? But for her, and again, a small side, side note, is the power for her was she said, I didn't want to carry that anger yeah. and that rage and that and that that dark kind of feeling with me anymore towards these people. Um, and she's like, I need to move past this. I, she said, I will never forget what they did to me. And it, I will still talk about the events of my life, but I'm not going to let them run my life with their awful things that they did. I survived. I want to make people understand the power of letting go of that stuff after a time when it's appropriate. You don't obviously forgive somebody like right after. Oh no. That takes time. It takes time. Well, and I guess this, this would be a moment for, a conversation a little with with Zoe about this is that that is a, a what do you again we'll get back to we'll get back to the more fun stuff with the bride but like if the power what what do you know about the power of forgiveness when it comes to like this kind of stuff like how is is it important oh yeah I mean like because if you're holding on to it it's, oh, I don't know if you guys have seen the image but it's like holding a rope and it's like pulling it you're both pulling it and if you don't let go like it's going to cut you open yeah so it's like how do i explain this you have to let go or it's going to consume you yeah 
And it took her a lot of courage, I know, and strength to go yeah. and apologize to all those people that hurt her and yeah. probably tortured her and all kinds of right and for, ask for the, ask for their forgiveness. Yeah, because that and yeah, and so and, and bo- then it's powerful for them too because they're like, wow, yeah. I did all these horrible things to her right. and she could forgive, forgive me. me. Yeah. Well, and there was a lot of controversy among other survivors of the Holocaust. They were mad yeah, at her. They're like, how dare you apologize? How or how dare you, how dare you ask for forgiveness? They didn't. She didn't apologize. How dare you forgive them for these things? They are awful men. And her statement is, I don't want that on my, I don't want that anger there anymore. Right. And she said, and she was very clear in saying, I'm not forgetting what they did. Okay. That remains the case for the courts and for the justice system. But for me, I, I've come to understand the importance of forgiveness. And so she would go and speak to high schools and schools, and schools would come to her Holocaust Museum, and they, she would talk about the power of forgiveness, the power of why we, we need to be better and do better. And so anyway, it's just Eva Kaur, if you're out there listening, Google her up. Eva Kaur, she um, is, is no longer with us, but her story, um, it shook me up when I watched it. They did a documentary on her, yeah, yeah. and she's... So when we talk about trauma, we talk about all this stuff that happens. Sometimes, a lot of times, forgiveness is a powerful thing for us to let go. But also as a way to say, you don't have power over me anymore. 100%. I'm not going to let forget what you did or what happened or what causes. But no, I'm not letting this happen to me. So there you go. There's your small uh, dodge into the counseling <laughs> corner for a hot moment. And then we'll be back. We're going to go back to with Princess Bride. But I think even within this movie, it's very interesting. Well, when we get to the conversation about the six-fingered man and you killed my father and... The the, the additional die. layer to yep. why Carrie Elwes got or why um, not Carrie Elwes it was Nigo Montoya uh, yeah Nigo Montoya got into so into that line and into that fight yeah. there's a deeper and and, inter- and more interesting concept there mm-hmm. um, okay so then we're in the torture chamber how does he get out of the torture chamber who comes to rescue him does it Fesic and Nigo yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah they come and find him they hear him and they hear him <laughs> well first he's <laughs> Montoya is swinging his dad's sword around, right. like, tell me where it's at. And then he right. goes right into the tree. Yeah. Where it goes and thinks down. he's been misled. He puts his hand like, ah. <laughs> and it happens to be that one knot that's hard yes. to find. It opens it up. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> so yeah, it's and so then they go in and they rescue him. Do they kill the bad guy or do they like knock him out? It's not super clear. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, it's not. Because he doesn't come back after that, does he? No, so the king had just put it up to 50, so um, <laughs> yeah. Wesley's like out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they come and they rescue Wesley, and then they, they take him to my favorite characters, yeah. Miracle Max. This character was loosely elf. based after, I think, his grandmother and some and okay. like an old baseball manager. They wanted that look kind of combined. Yeah. I compared them to the Keebler elves. Yeah. <laughs> he literally did. Because, <laughs> I mean, they're tiny. I see it. They're tiny. Yeah. They're Plus, in a little cottage. Plus, like the pill that they give him to the chocolate coating. Yeah, the chocolate. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. They they were the Keeblers. Yeah. So they give him the pill. They use a bellows to like. Yeah, I was like CPR and with the. I love it. And then he pushes down. By the way, during the scene, Kiria was actually had to be removed and have his like dummy in there because he couldn't stop laughing (laughs) (laughs) and the director had the same problem yeah like they had to like go watch from like far away because they just couldn't it was too funny um the actor played an ego swears he bruised a rib from holding in his laughter (laughs) it's just because he was alibing a lot of things too like the mlt line i think that wasn't part of the script perfect yeah what is it mutton lettuce and tomato yes Yes. it's nice and lean Red tomatoes. Yeah. Yes. It's it's a fun little fun little scene. And so, that lady, his wife is Oh, she's great. Um the lady from Scrooge, but I can never remember her name. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Kane something. Oh yeah, man. Uh I know who that is. Yeah. She's uh, she's Carol Sydney Kane, Ka- maybe? Sydney Kane. No, who sorry? That was Carol Kane. Carol Kane, yeah, Carol Kane. So Carol Kane I is my actually, favorite. She's one of my favorite characters in the She's movie. got that just zany voice and zany look. Um, she also is currently on Star Trek New Worlds and she plays the chief engineer. Ooh. And she's gets she's got that voice and you're just like, Oh, Carol Kane, you're a national treasure. That's awesome. Yeah. She's, she's both trying to help the guy and, and annoy her husband yeah. at the yeah. same time. It's just, it's, I love it. It's, it's like it's, I can't believe you won't help him. <laughs> so you probably should just said her same name. What? Humperdeek? <laughs> Humperdeek, Humperdeek, Humperdeek. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's just so much. It's so fun to watch this movie and just enjoy the characters and the actors. Just make this movie an amazing film. He didn't say true love. He said true blob. True blob. <laughs> Liar! <laughs> I love it. It's it's the. Fun. I like their dynamic. Yeah, yes. fun to watch together. 
It's great. So then we're now have to we we're gonna go storm the castle. Good luck storming the castle. You It'll take a miracle. <laughs> hey, bye. <laughs> <laughs> so they 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 get to the castle, but unfortunately, um, obviously Wesley's still recovering, and they have to <laughs> carry him off. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're, they're weakening up Bernie's him all Literally. over the place. <laughs> there, well, there's there's also a scene as I think as they're take, rescuing him, they're trying to get through a crowd, and someone says like, "Oh, we everybody might. move!" Yeah, <laughs> or it's, yeah, he's everybody move, and then, um, and then they get to like a door or something, and he's like, "We need the brute squad," and then um, obviously Fezzik goes, "I am the brute squad." Yeah. <laughs> He is. <laughs> Just tanked on the door. It's fantastic. Um, so we get to the, we're gonna the siege of the castle. Um, they're at their and then Inigo uh, tracks down Rugen. Okay, so no, Rugen is a six fingered man. Yes. So Rugen the torturer is a six fingered man. Yep. Um, so there is you have the background on why this scene where he yeah. does the whole thing. Again. Okay, so the actor who played Inigo, um, his father actually had died from cancer, and oh, so wow. he was using that as a lot of inspiration. You for, killed my father, prepare to die. So he wow. was thinking, you know, it's like he was metaf- metaphorically killing the cancer that yeah. killed his father. Right. He used that for the character. Wow. I and mean, it, he did have to say it so many times. Yeah. Like, well, mm-hmm. and the way that he says it speaks to that, where he gets more emotional. Yeah. And he's, you know, prepare to die. He gets more confident in it. It's, yeah. It's it's brilliant. I love that whole chase scene. The Scooby-Doo chase? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just runs away. Like, <sighs> are you really a wimp? Like, you're going to run away. You killed my dad, and you're going to run yeah. away from me? <laughs> like, yeah. I love how he's, like, slamming himself in the door repeatedly, <laughs> and then... And then <laughs> getting away from me, Fezzik! Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it kind of is like me when I can't open bottles sometimes. Aaron, yeah. I need you! Yeah. <laughs> and he just comes through and just one-taps the door. Yep. That's... <laughs> It's accurate. <laughs> Blows it off the hinges. Like, thank well, you. And Inigo is so crazed at this point that he won't listen to anything. He's like, I have a chance to avenge my father. He's yeah. been waiting a really long time. Yeah. I think He's been looking years. for him for a very <laughs> long time. 20 years. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father prepared to die. That whole and how it ends with him finally taking care of Rugen and all that is just... Poetic justice poetic. in every way. It is I love how he says, like, uh, after... Uh, my work being revenge for so long. I don't know what to do now. Yeah. 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 Well, and that speaks to our conversation about Eva Kaur and that whole forgiveness thing. Like, if you, if revenge and rage and anger is what powers you for all that time mm-hmm. and then you finally get your revenge, you finally have your moment and it's like, was it real? Now what do I do? Now, now what do I put? All that rage and anger and revenge is gone because it's been taken away from me because I just took revenge what do I fill my life with what do mm-hmm. and so Eva Kaur's point was which was an interesting thank you for bringing it up <laughs> an interesting full circle Welcome. thing is is that she was like you you have to live your life um, bettering people and encouraging people and loving people and making this world a better place because if you live your life in rage and anger and that was part of her response to Jew- Jewish survivors of the Holocaust was she's like look I'm not here to tell you that you have to forgive him or forgive the Nazis for what they did to you but we have to move past it and, and, and the emotional like weight that it ca- we carry with this because it's holding us back from doing the good and great things to, to show the world what it means to be loving, to be caring, and to be accepting, and to be that person that they need, that hero that we need. So Because we don't want to stoop down to their level either. Right. Yeah. You don't want to be yeah. in that. You don't want to be... You know, you don't want to become the nightmare that you that you're trying that, to get rid of. <laughs> right. You don't like, want to. Yeah. You don't want to lower yourself. You don't want to become yeah. that. And so that's that's a lot of what she talked about. It was like I didn't want to become what they had done to. Like, and she, she's right. Like, how yeah. do you? How, you can't. Yeah. Um, okay. So then, so we've had the 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 fight is finished. Um, there now it's to the next fight. <laughs> six, yeah. Now <laughs> it's to the next fight. Um, Her almost fight. Yeah. Almost. almost yeah. <laughs> So the prince now has challenges Wesley to a duel, um, and he still can't move. Yeah, he's still not he's able to. Laying move. on a bed. Yeah, yeah. But he's Carrie Elwes, so we can fake it. Yes, and he does that very well. Yeah, he literally immediately abandons ship and sits down. Like the yeah. king is scared of him. Yeah. <laughs> well, because the the line that Wesley says is like, "Oh, it's bone chilling." Right, let me, let's let us find that line. Because, to the pain. Yeah, to the pain. Yeah. And he's yeah. just, and he, he, he literally, like, you're right, he scares the prince <laughs> out of his mind. Yeah. Because, well, and I think he also, the prince is under, is not, he's, he's never really done his own fighting. Everyone else in this movie has done, like, Fez, Fezek and mm-hmm. the guy, like, all of those, he's, he's manipulated, he's paid. Right. He's never gotten his hands dirty. Mm-mm. And now, all of a sudden, there's no one around to protect him. 
Brute Squad, Brute Squad has shifted sides. Yep. He's alone, and Wesley, as immovable as he is, can still threaten the life out of oh, him. Oh yeah. And so he, yeah, he just and they lay, they leave him tied up to the t- tied up to the chair. Um, With orders to not kill him. Yeah. He says I want him to live a long life alone in his cowardice. Yeah. Yeah. So then they all jump on the horses, which. Oh, God. You're yeah. hurting the horses. Yeah, you have to kind of suspend your level of belief or disbelief for that. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's a, we've skipped over the parts with the book being when they're coming out of the book and the kid's like, Fred Savage in a really great role as a kid is like, is this a mm-hmm. kissing move? Is this a kissing book? And, and, and then at the end, he loves it. He's, he's he, like, I don't his, mind his, his, it. his grandmother's like, are you sure this, you know, this is kissing? The he's like, no, no, it's okay. I'm, I'm good. I, I, I like it. It's yeah. fine. And so, yeah, in his back, the boy, the boy eagerly asks his grandfather to read him the story again in which the grandfather replies, as, as you, you wish. wish. Yeah. Boom, roll credits. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's such a good movie. It is a good movie. Like, you can't, I mean, there's probably like one or two faults that you could really work at if you wanted to. Um, but it's just. Oh. And it's interesting because it didn't do very well in the box office at yeah. the time. I don't think they knew really? how to promote it. Yeah. Um, but it's become a huge classic basically oh, yeah. once it no, went to video. It's probably it's probably on lists, um, so many lists of movies you need to see before you die. It's like yeah. the top 100 movies you have to see, I think, yeah. or something. And it's just it's such a heartwarming film, and it hits all the right notes. And I think when we look at modern film, um, <laughs> so Phil, I don't know if you've been watching the the, the news about Madame Web and how terrible it's been doing at the at the box office right now, and how many people just absolutely hate this film. Yeah, uh, it wasn't written well, and a lot of complaints, a lot of modern films complaints have been, and even game complaints. That's a whole other thing um, about how the yeah. writing is not good, how the writing isn't, it doesn't stand up. And with this movie, the writing doesn't, there's no, there's, you, it doesn't, it doesn't fade with time. Well, I think, I think it uh, goes to, to show like why so many other like video games and yeah. other TV shows reference this movie so yeah, much. Because it's that good. Yeah. And the writing is topical. Every dynamic in this movie, we've all had something in our life that we wanted to we wanted to get rid of. We wanted to kill. We wanted to. We were so angry about it. It it, it. it held our revenge. We've all had that first love. We've all had the. Every single moment in this movie is something where we've all been. We've all experienced it. So, I think it's a classic. I think it just shows that love conquers all. Yeah, it does because in the end, the the prince the prince is prince is in trouble and whatever, and then we yeah we get from there. Yeah. So. Um, I just want to say a funny trivia thing. I can't believe we skipped over the priest. I was, oh, I was yes, going. that's my favorite. And I found my out on way. trivia, he's actually based on a rabbi in the Chicago area. Uh, I think in Goldman's childhood, okay. he, his um, his accent made Marriage. him giggle. Always. Oh, yeah. yeah. bring us together today. Treasure oh. your love. That's my favorite I part. I liked that, Zoe. I was like, you cannot be serious. I'm like, just wait, <laughs> just wait. <laughs> there have been people that have had that line in their weddings. We should oh, do really? it. No. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too on the nose, but... It's a common thing. It's it, done a it, lot. It's, yeah. Well, and so... Yeah, I, I do love it because yeah, I I remember quoting like marriage, yeah, wedding judge, hey, blessed arrangement, <laughs> and it's just like and oh. they're like hurry it up, hurry yeah, it he's up. like come on, come on, come on, come <laughs> on. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's good. It's a good movie. Like yeah, we forgot about that moment. There's a couple like it's it's just it's so full of great stuff. It is good mm-hmm. lines. Yeah, good movie, good writing, good 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 acting, fast yeah. pace too. Obviously. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it moves pretty quick. Like our discussion of it moved pretty like, and I think the thing is, it's like there's not a lot to criticize. There's not a lot to be like, oh, well, this didn't work. Well, I didn't like this, or I didn't like this. It's like he really liked all of it. This yeah. is a really great movie. It's a feel good movie. So there you go. Um, all right, we're gonna take a pause because I'm gonna eat more snacks. <laughs> Vicky needs more cheese. It's of course. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be back. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna continue this double header action. Um, we'll come back here in just a moment. We will continue now on the other side on side B. Hold on. Should we do our ratings for the movie? Oh, oh yeah. Should. Well, I know. We think we know the answer to this question. Well, Phil, what's yours? I'm eight point five. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I I really enjoyed it, and thanks for getting me to finally watch it. You're welcome. And because yeah, like I'm a gamer and. A lot of these things, like I know, it's referencing something. Right. Now I know where it came yeah. from. Yeah, mm-hmm. like the whole rodents of unusual, unusual size. Si- yeah, Fallout New Vegas, one of my favorite games of all time. Now yeah. I know where that came yeah, from. Yeah, now you have the connection. Okay. Yeah. Why an eight point five though? <laughs> uh, I wish it was like a little bit funnier. Yeah. Um, it's like so, that slapstick. 
Yeah, it, yeah. it, it, it kind of had like a little bit of Monty Python going for it. I feel yeah. like. Um, and I'm not like a huge fan. Oh, I love Monty Python. <laughs> so. Mon- yeah, Monty Python's an acquired taste. Um, yeah, I'm with you there. I'm not a big Monty Python I, fan yeah. myself. I, so I enjoy the, the 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 Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yes. I don't like Life of Brian. I haven't seen that one. <sighs> it's a it's a play on the Jesus okay. story, um, and it it's it's very like if you showed it to a die hard like person faith filled person they would they would be very unhappy with it because it definitely is is blasphemous and hair like it's Boy. all over the place <laughs> it's it's hu- it's british humor which you have to remember british humor cuts really close to the bone and there's some british yeah. humor it's hit or miss with some of it i love and some stuff i've watched with you and i'm like no yeah, yeah. same no. same yeah it definitely yeah there it's it, it's this is going to sound like it's not that it's rude humor, but that is British humor. British humor is rude. Mm-hmm. It they're they're gonna be like, I don't whatever. You don't care. We don't care. But I'm afraid of offending people. No, there's <laughs> it, it, nothing is off limits, and so, no one is off limits. So we'll 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 go out on this with this. So there's a show that was called Faulty Towers, mm-hmm. and it has John Cleese in it, oh, okay, yeah. and a bunch of others. It's a fantastic TV series. They're actually apparently putting on a play, oh. a Faulty Towers play with a new with a, uh, obviously a younger cast. This is the hotel, right? Yeah, the hotel. So again, British humor, correct? So there's an episode which I think they either have taken off rotation or it's like it was originally not shown or it ca- it caused concern. So again, British humor is irreverent. Doesn't give a care about anything. They are going to make fun of everybody and everything. And so one of the episodes had guests from Germany. Okay. Oh yeah, now, this was so The British Particularly like to make fun of Germans, and this is again this the is sli- shortly after the '60s. This is yeah. like the '60s, so we've had some distance from World War II, but not enough. And <laughs> so there's 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 a subtext in the episode with a German guest where don't mention the war, don't mention the war, uh-huh. and a moment happens where John Cleese goes fully manic. And does like the goose stepping, like like me, like a characterization or a kind of like a making fun of German soldiers and the things that they would do in their marching. Yeah, and it's absolutely knocked down, like just absurd satire humor. Like I chuckle at it because I'm just like they had the nerve to, do- to go there and to just. I feel like because- it's either think it's hilarious or you just want to crawl under a desk and go stop. Yeah, <laughs> that, that makes me think of like. People like Ricky Gervais. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ricky okay. Gervais. He's one of my favorites. Yeah, he. But he's, I understand people yeah, might he, not like. What he he's cuts th- close to the bone. <laughs> yeah. Well, and people. So people will watch The Office in the UK episode, episodes because The Office came from the UK originally. It was yeah, originally yeah. A, a UK show, and then they're gonna then they watch the U, the Office here in the states, and there are people who will say they hate The Office from the UK because the difference between him and Steve Carell is Steve Carell. Is kind of aloof, but he's he he's not mean. He's he he doesn't have a mean. He, Ricky Gervais he, is he, mean. Yeah, Ricky Gervais's <laughs> character in the Office no redeem no redeeming qualities. Right. He is an absolute jerk to every single person in that show, and there is no character arc. He's just unbelievably awful. He plays a jerk so much, yes, so many times, and yep. so well. I almost feel like he's a jerk in real life. <laughs> Maybe. But I hear villains can be some of the nicest people. That's yeah. sort of funny about well, it. Well, and I think Ricky Gervais, his his sense of humor is just irreverent. It's also British, and so he just doesn't care. And right. a yeah. lot of British comedians, when they when people start to watch British shows or watch British comedy, they're like, "Whoa, this is really rude." And it's like, yeah. "No, that's just British cu- culture. Like culture is they just they don't the humor that they have is just no, no, whatever it is." <laughs> so yeah, there's if you're interested in checking out, I don't know if it's it's probably still on YouTube somewhere. Um, but the episode of the Faulty Towers regarding okay. the Germans. And it's an episode that has routinely kind of come up on people's radar, and they're like, what is this? What is going on here? And it's just like... Mm. <laughs> so when you said Monty Python, there is there are people in that who watch that episode, and they go, oh, oh. But it's British humor. British humor is very different from American humor. It's, not it's only a flesh wound. It is a flesh wound, but you're bleeding. <laughs> but you see, that's different. Your, your leg's off. That's different <laughs> I'm sorry, than I'm making fun like... of Nazis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. So on that note, we're going to take a pause. We're going to get some more snacks. We're going to refill, refresh, and prepare to dig in and dive into The Fifth Element with Bruce Willis and Chris Tucker and um, everybody else. What's the lady? She's like Russian or something. Mila Jovanovic. She she, I believe she's in Resident Evil. Resident Evil. Yeah, she she is. She yeah, she was in and Ultraviolet. Yep. Yep. yep, she's been. A, she's she's a versatile actress. Mm-hmm. She's got a lot of talents and skills. Sure does. So when we come back, we'll talk about that. Be back in just well for you. It'll be a second and a half while you're listening. For us, it'll be a, a few minutes. Welcome back. 
Welcome back to Nerds by Screenlight. It's the double double feature. I almost said double header. That's a baseball game. <laughs> yeah. Pop that. Ba- you keep saying that. It's not a baseball game. <laughs> um, it is a double feature, and we are headed into our second feature, which is the fifth element, um, the 1997 movie, which is to, that's a long time ago. But that's 10 years difference between the movies. I yeah. was just thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. And this, I went into this completely blind. Yep. I had never did. seen it before. Yep. It was, it was fantastic. There were some moments where like, ooh, how is Vicky... I don't know. <laughs> we will learn today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there there are certain elements. You held, I feel like you held in your reactions. Yeah. Or I, tr- I tried not to look at you because I was yeah. trying to very much focus on the movie for myself. Yeah. There's certain elements in this movie that we'll skip over and or kind of dodge a little bit because there's some stuff. Yeah. Again, it's a it's a 1997 movie by Luke Besson. Luke Besson is... Um, and and was and somewhat still is one of the action directors of our time. He's he's gone over the top with some of his later films, but this was one of the the kind of the in his era, as Taylor Swift would be in her era. This was Luke Besson's action adventure <laughs> era. Uh, however, Phil has said that we need to have a segment called Phil's. What are we calling it? Phil's facts. Phil's facts with Phil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nerds by Screenlight probably Slash presents feeling. Nerds Phil Phil's ah, I tried it that didn't Phil's work facts right well. again <laughs> Nerds by Screenlight presents Phil's facts with Phil Go. okay <laughs> so we're going to start off with two personal facts okay. about this movie okay did you know this is my favorite movie of all time yes. really yeah. okay <laughs> we talked about it also I've mentioned it before on the podcast it is also the movie that I voted. To get a sequel and to also not get a sequel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um yeah, they just couldn't do it now. Uh yeah. A prequel, maybe? Yeah. Um okay, anyways, interesting facts about this movie. Did you know? Bruce Willis. No, I didn't know. Bru- well, I'm about to I'm about to learn you today. I'm about to learn you. Okay. Bruce Willis character, Corbin Dallas. Mm-hmm. The role was originally meant for Mel Gibson. <laughs> Oh. Thank you. We all we are all in agreement. Um, yeah, Mel Gibson turned it down immediately. Uh, Bruce Willis highly considered not taking the role because his last two movies before this movie kind of flopped. Um, Kobe, Kobe, uh, Chris Tucker's character was originally meant for Prince. I could see that one though. I read that. Yeah. And you can tell. He, yeah, you he, can. He is Prince, basically. You can totally tell. Um, <laughs> when I read that, I'm like, so much makes sense now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the language that Lilu speaks, the divine language, yeah. is a real language that they wrote yep. for her to speak. And she would actually write letters back and forth between the director in that language. Huh. Uh, another interesting fact. Diva, yep. the singer, the opera singer, uh, she... The, the song she sings is impossible to yeah. actually sing. Yeah. She did sing it, but they cut it and edited it together. Mm-hmm. And whenever they played that scene, they played the music, and she kind of like lip-synced along with it. Corbin, Bruce Willis's reaction is his real reaction to hearing that song. And yep. he immediately gives her a standing ovation. Oh, yeah. he's <laughs> Bravo, bravo. Also, um, this movie was... I think it started in development in like 1992. When I was born. Yeah, he, the director wrote it when he was 16. Started started writing yeah. it when he was 16. Wow. It took him until he was 38 to get it actually done. Yeah. So um, those are, those are Phil's facts. <laughs> this movie could have been terrible, <laughs> <laughs> basically. Or worse, depending on your... This has been Facts with Phil <laughs> yes. here on Nerds by Screenlight. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you for listening. This has been Phil. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> You're Can you welcome. please not do that voice anymore on this podcast? <laughs> he Why? does it at the end of every podcast. Like pretty much. Like, what Why? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with the it's voice? Annoying. <laughs> it's annoying. That's the point. That's the joke. That's the joke. That's the point. <laughs> my evil plan has been exposed. Oh, my God. I'll have to come up with something new to, for, for my evil plans to take over the world. Okay, so... <laughs> This movie has an aesthetic, and its aesthetic is just wild. Mm-hmm. It yeah. is a wild little movie. Yeah. That... There's a lot happening. Yeah. There's there so is. many visual things going on. Yeah. I kind of wish I'd just pause yeah. and look at certain scenes, because it's like, where do you look? Where? Where? <laughs> what? So yeah. we get... When I, and I forgot about this. I forgot that Luke Perry was in this movie. Yes. Yeah. So in 1914, 
we get yep. the scene of in Egypt. In Egypt. And what I love about this moment is is that it's such a slow burn. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't rush to tell you. Right? Yeah. It, it it shows you slowly but surely what's going on. You have the little boy who's trying to keep the light. A and the professor light. Oh, light. <laughs> sees light. He just fog asleep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like can somebody switch out and give this kid a break? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so that continues to be a thing. And so he, so the kid brings, I think, lunch to his friends. And it, so I can't remember if Stargate came after this or before this. Stargate, the original movie. Mm-hmm. I would not know. Well, I would, as a Stargate fan, I, you would think I would know this information. But, you know, I don't do my research apparently when I do this. I'm going to say before Stargate movie 1994. Okay. So okay, a couple, couple, couple yeah. years, be- a couple years before. Um, so there's a little bit of that influence in this opening scene with the Egyptian stuff. Yeah. Enough of it that's like, oh, okay, kind of. They kind of probably took some stuff from it. But um, we have them discovering the fifth element. The professor's like, oh, we can get in this. And then you're like, oh, oh this is interesting. We're setting ourselves in a very non-digital world. And all of a sudden, <laughs> well, no, even before that, with because again, I came into this movie completely blind. I was convinced the priest and these aliens coming down were the bad guys because he comes in oh, yeah. almost seeming like oh, I yeah. thought he was going to kill them. Yeah. And then I see these guys coming in and I'm like, they're going to kill them all. I was mm, positive that's what was happening. Yeah. And it just turns out to be this whole different thing. Yeah. So the, me reason, off. the reason why he was going to poison the professor and his friend is because they were discovering the truth and they were so close. Yeah that they can't be allowed to continue to live to know the secret because it's it's protected, it's supposed to be. But the aliens show up, and the alien design is just so fantastical. Oh, so awesome. Cool. I love it because it's you, you get the sense that they are powerful mm-hmm. and that they shouldn't be messed with. And so they're just, and they, and they, they glide. <laughs> like, there's no, like, sound of, <clears throat> nope. <clears throat> it's just, <laughs> whoosh, whoosh. Oh. And I just, this is one of the moments where I'm like, I wish there was more to this movie, either a prequel or a yeah. sequel. Yeah. I want to know more about those dudes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're definitely, I'm, I'm sure within the mythology of, of Luke Besson's story that he wrote, there absolutely is. Yeah. And why do they care what happens to Earth? Right. And how did they're the very fifth, invested. How they did are. the fifth yeah. element get to be installed here? Like, what is, what is the, what is the piece of this that we don't know? So then, so they go in, and Luke, Luke Perry's character, who is an absolute hot shot, you know, whatever, is like, "What's going on? You killed my!" Brother. And so they're working on, re- they're, they're removing the the fifth element to the mm-hmm. ship. Um, they, I believe, they collect the stones as yeah, well. Yeah, they get it all. So yeah. it all gets on the ship. Yep. But like one of the guy, one of the aliens, um, he shoots, and that then triggers the door to close. Yes. Uh, and then that alien is trapped in there. What's interesting yeah. is 300 years later, when we eventually get back to that temple, that alien body is nowhere to be found. Right. <laughs> so either they forgot to like have its body carapace there, or it just disintegrated in 300 years, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, it was... I liked how it just like it, it built slowly and kind of got... like You confused Vicky because, yeah, yeah, if you were watching it for the first time, you're like, well, who are these guys? Who's the story? It doesn't tell you who they are. <laughs> it's counting on you to figure that out as the movie goes. And movies used to and some still do but most movies don't these days trusted their audiences to figure out what was going on and to like give you information and for you then to come to an educated decision as the movie unfolded before you and you would then go oh that's what's going on here that's the story well and he basically implies like I'm not important life is important yeah and we gotta save life yeah which is an amazing <laughs> statement mm-hmm. yeah it's like what what a humble self-sacrificing being yeah mm-hmm. so then we get the 300 years later and we meet our friend corbin, corbin dallas, dallas. <laughs> bruce willis like and if that is coolest man yeah he's just he this is his this is his this is his era yeah he he was making action movies like all and unfortunately if you haven't been watching the news or you don't know bruce willis has has had to retire from acting because he's experiencing a advanced neurological condition that is akin to dementia but it actually it, it effectively stops him from being able to speak and engage. He just becomes a shell that doesn't have the ability to verbalize, um, and it will eventually will shut him down to the point where he will not be able to engage at all. And so this has been in the last I'd say the last two years where it really became apparent that something was going on, and he was just trying to make movies to kind of make that money and get that bank. Yeah. Um, but it became too much where they had to. He's now in the care of his family, and they post updates every every couple of months. But they're like, yeah, he's. He's gone. Like, we're not going to see Bruce Willis in another movie again. That's so sad. And it is, because he was, for a lot of people, and for a lot of, like, guys and girls, like, but especially for me as a boy, like, I loved watching Bruce Willis just kick butt and take names. 
<coughs> he was he was a superhero. He was he was the guy. And so I don't know. It's just it's interesting to see him now in this movie and go, oh man. Yeah. This was this was in his prime. Were, yeah, these yeah. were the days when Bruce Willis. Um, I love that. I love the design of the city. It's so futuristic, yes. but yet also so. Like not futuristic. Like the cars look like nineteen thirties. Like, like it's yeah. futuristic, but it's not shiny. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. it's, it's got that dirty. grit kinda. It is a dirty city. But there's so much detail yeah. and so many interesting things. Yeah. Can we talk about how well the CGI holds up still yeah. to this day? It is incredible. Yeah. Like legit, I didn't worry. Like, because like you say, you watch a movie, and you go, okay, well, there's the screen, there's the green screen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's the there's a the little effect around the little miniature that they were using in this movie. You don't pick up on it. I'm sure if you really dug into it and went frame by frame and tried to find it, you could probably. But yeah, you're just in immersed in this crazy world <coughs> with a taxi that you know Bruce Willis is driving and the systems. There's no explanation. It's just automatic. You push the buttons. It tells you yeah. what's going on. Do we ever get to see his friend that he's been taught he talks no. to? We no. never get to see the friend at the garage. Uh-uh. And I learned something new about this that he's actually like a car thief. I didn't really pick that up last oh, time. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay, so he stole the so car. Yeah, that's why he does. Boss. That's why he has only five points left. Yeah. On his life. <laughs> okay, there we go. So that was yeah, and so that whole thing like he's he's really at the edge of his rope. Like mm-hmm. he's really he's dodging. He's trying to trying to stay alive. Um, and so the, the, what this movie does really well is it puts us in a position of knowing he's only got five points left, like he's in trouble, and you know in your head, okay, something's going to go wrong yes. to make this even worse. Yep. And so we get him, and he drives around and whatever, and then... They, they resurrect the fifth element. They resurrect the fifth element. Which el- turned out to not be a perfect man, but right. a perfect, perfect woman. woman. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they have this whole device where they take the wreckage and they put the thing in there, um, and then they create Lilu. Yeah. And obviously, you know, I'd like to get a picture. Yeah, for, for the archives, um, and that's what that's where things start to go wrong. Because yeah, they then they put the heat sensor, like the costume on her that yeah. she wears for most of the rest of the movie, and the flash it agitates her. And <laughs> what I love about this, well, movie, then one of the guys like taunts her, which yeah, was a he's mistake. Like, you oh, oh, yeah. he's like the only way you get out, isn't it? And then she just punches. I thought she. I forgot that she didn't like actually punch into him. I thought. It, I thought so too. And but she just punches him yeah. like really hard <laughs> and grabs his ID and he and she escapes and they have the gall to be the surprised. music. Yeah, the music through this scene. Yeah, through the whole movie. Yeah, but mm-hmm. the, the oh, it's so. Awesome. I just love the. Um, I don't know what even what he is like the doctor or whatever and he's just like perfect perfect, like perfect. <laughs> yeah so to, to to dance around the subject that we're approaching yeah so the the actress port that portrays Lilu um, is a young very beautiful lady um, and the the it's the stereotypical thing we're like oh she's absolutely perfect in yeah. every way and her how she just looks and whatever you know whatever and so yeah she's the perfectly designed woman according to the 1997 movie the fifth yeah. but that's as far as it will go like that's what the that's the universe that we're living in right now we we live in a universe on our own where that is not the actual right. thing we talk right. about we say that women are perfect in whatever shape size whatever they are but in this movie Lilu is the perfect woman because uh, repeatedly characters will be like she's perfect yep like what i said perfect so it's just it's it's a whole thing yeah uh so she escapes and jumps crap, through the aluminum foil yeah ju- like just <laughs> she's that she's that she is the fifth element and she just <laughs> Plows through everything, yeah. And then she, I love, I love kind of the sarcastic conversation of like, you know, hey, is she gonna come quietly? Nope, she's not gonna come quietly. Nope, she didn't listen to me or she didn't hear me. <laughs> she just turns around. <laughs> she just turns around. It's like, oh man. And they, so yeah, she, she she jumps into traffic, into the floating flying cars, whoa, and then crashes into his his taxi. And he's, you, you have, have one been, point left. On your you life. have been in an accident. <laughs> you have, you have point one point left, left on, on your life. And he's just like, I know, thank I you. Know. And he's like, he rips it out. Yeah, he just, robot. Because <laughs> he knows what's going to happen is that they're eventually going to invalidate his license. So he's just like, all right, I'm going to fly my own. Uh, so she's in the back seat and he all has no McDonald's it. product placement. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> we still got McDonald's in tw- 2214. Yeah, yeah we figured out the math. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 2214. So yeah, it's so we've got ugh, so much is happening right now. So she's in the back seat and he's like, "Who are you?" and she's t- speaking this weird language. <laughs> he's like, he can't understand. Big um, bada boom. <laughs> yeah, bada boom. They get he yeah, gets that. Big. <laughs> they connect to that. Bada boom, bada boom. <laughs> and so then she he the police find him. Yeah. And boom, boom, you know, we, and he's and he's and he's in that mode of like submitting to it yeah. and like, "Okay, whatever, whatever, whatever." 
And then what does he? She sees this little um, ad and it says, please help. So she says that. Oh, well, she's, okay. It's, she has this incredible ability to pick up on language and information mm-hmm. like a human computer. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, that's she has all the information. She just has to unlock it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was. You're snack- fine. Go ahead. I'm snacking on some Snacking. Um, what's the word? Um, respectfully mm-hmm. snacking. I'm trying to. to. To our listeners here. I'm covering the microphone so you don't hear our ASMR. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Whatever. Okay, so I forgot that she was reading an ad. Because does the movie tell us or show us the ad? Yeah, it does. Okay, yeah, I missed it's, that part. It's like a magazine on the okay. back seat. So she, so she, call, she, she kind of pleads with him, help me, please help me. Yes. And he, oh. I think he kind of goes, Oh, and he says like I'm gonna regret this or this isn't gonna. Yep. I'm, he's like I'm. This is not gonna. And so <laughs> begin to an amazing car chase. Yeah. Yes. So he the takes off. Guy. Yeah. He just and he. You get a hint at his background at the beginning of what yeah. what it used to. Would yeah. you really see it come through with this chase? Yeah. Like oh boy. So yeah, then, he's a wheel man. He is. He's a definite. He's definitely <laughs> talented at what he does. And she's just flying all over the car as he's <laughs> trying to. <laughs> Thank you. And then he gets. So then we get the picture of the two guys, and they're like, "Yeah, we'll chase him down." And then he clicks after lunch, <laughs> and they're. At- <laughs> I love, I love Zoe's laugh on that <laughs> after lunch because, because it he's is taking all the food. The other yeah. guy doesn't even have food. Yeah, so they're they're get and what's what this movie does, and it, it's sort of it's it's kind of satire about like. I guess we call it the male gaze. So all the all the men in this movie they're distracted by beautiful women in their world. Mm-hmm. And so the the waitress and it's inter- so in this movie's universe, women are dressed provocatively, I think would be the, the I think gen- yeah. colored hair it seems. Yeah. yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of colored hair. There's a lot and it's, it's the, supposed to be futuristic, I guess. To yeah. be clear, we're yeah. not we're not criticizing the provocative dress or it, like that's not our goal here. Uh, but our conversation is about within this movie, it's it's very stylized of how Costumes and women are dressed, and so and and not just the women either. Yeah, yeah, the, there's some, yeah, yeah, because even he, even Bruce Willis's character wears like some weird crop top kind of mm-hmm. business going on. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not to mention Chris those. Tucker's character. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, when we get to that, <laughs> yeah. oh boy. Yeah, and inter- <laughs> so there's a lot of interesting. And this is a film that came out in 1997. Of all the times for this for this kind of interesting conversation to happen, 1997. So we get. So yeah, he's at the, he's at the McDonald's drive-through, and the younger guy who's in the passenger side is kind of just staring at this young lady <laughs> who is particularly attractive, I guess. And the old guy just like, "Give me my food." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they pull away, or they pull her ever, ever, whatever. And then Corbin Dallas just <laughs> boosh and spills all the stuff yep. on him. And he goes, "Whoa!" <laughs> well, then they're chasing him, and they run into a McDonald's truck. Yeah, and yeah. they get all the food. It was just I thought that was hilarious. All the irony. Yeah, so all they, the food you could want, man. Here you go. So yeah, Bruce Willis is trying to run. He's like, usually they take you give up after a minute, and then immediately the camera cuts cut, cuts to all these police cars just coming yeah. at him. He's like, well, maybe it's two minutes. <laughs> we got to get to the fog. Yeah, we got to get to the fog. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he says we might not make the fog, mm-hmm. and that's kind of like, oh boy, this is he's as yeah. confident and as good as he is. He's like, I don't know if we're gonna pull this off. Um, but they do make it to the fog. Yeah, <laughs> and they're hiding the slums, as I call it. The, yeah, the, so yeah, the lower city. <laughs> Yeah. It's a very vertical city. The the, yeah. the upper elites are on the top, and the yeah. the the poverty is on the bottom. Yeah, it's very low. So the they end up in the fog, and then she says, "Does she at this point does she say the 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 the, the guy that she needs to see this?" Yes. The, so then yeah, she, she says a uh, priest or something priest. Like and that. his name, she has his name, and he's like, "Okay, well, I guess I got to go." AKA Obi One. Yeah, the the Obi One Kenobi. <laughs> AKA <character>. Ian Holm. <laughs> yeah. I love Ian Holm in this movie. Yes. He's fantastic. He's just so like... Witty and like... Right. He's (laughs) He's trying so so hard. He's trying so hard. And yeah. Well, we skipped over the fact that like he gets called into the president's office when the big threat is coming. And he's like, you need... Like, this is happening. Here's the thing. Yeah, we skipped over that. So... Then the so the the guy the aliens come and show up and they've got the thing and they get attacked by basically the brute squad yeah and it crashes on the planet and all that stuff and so he is then pulled like the president's like we'll call you if we need you we've got we've got this handled now and he's just like uh, okay so she then says I need to speak to this priest blah 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 I'll go there and so I think Bruce Willis at this point. Takes her back over to the priest, mm-hmm. knocks on the door, and, and he's like, a "I'm not doing weddings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> weddings is down the way." He's like, yeah. he's like, "No, this. She asked for you. She said she's something like this." And he, he notices her tattoos. He's like, "Hey, she's got this tattoo. Here it is." And then it clicks. 
this is the fifth element. And then he runs to go put on his little like, costume. Vested, yeah. <laughs> he's like, I need a better outfit than yeah. this. <laughs> well, and he's like, he burst. So it was his assistant, who I love this character. He's his son as well. Oh, okay. His, okay, so he's just totally this like nervous little kid. And mm-hmm. then his father, boom. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what's going on? <laughs> he's probably used to his dad acting like a frenetic madman. But he, his dad starts looking through stuff. And so at this point, Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis being Bruce Willis and the male gaze makes a horrible decision. Yeah. Yes, like, oh, a God. horrible decision. Yeah. Bad, bad move. <laughs> bad, bad move. So he he's kind of like, oh, well, maybe if I kiss her, maybe that'll work. And nope. Gun. She immediately. Gun. Right to the dome. Right to the face. <laughs> like, well, she, I mean, technically it wakes her up, but. Yeah, yeah. But she then she makes him pay for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then he like negotiates with her, trying to like, I'm, uh, and she's still got a gun pointed at him. <laughs> and she's. Dabba, 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 dabba. Yeah, yeah. She's saying her, <laughs> saying her language. And then obviously Ian Holm and the son come in and they kind of negotiate things and, and then they say, okay, well, you can leave now. You go, go, go. We'll, t- we'll take care of this. And he asks the priest, but, like, what does that mean? Yeah. And she says, not without my, my permission. permission. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, I should have done, done that. that. Nope. <laughs> but I love how this movie t- covers that. Like, it doesn't yeah. do it in like a preachy way. Yeah. It does it in this sub- subliminal kind of like, Bruce Willis is not, he's not a lecherous kind of guy. He's just kind of like, well, maybe if I try this, it'll, and it, no, no, bad idea. And he knew he shouldn't have done it. Yeah. yeah. But he was just kind of like, Arr. but the movie handles it in a way that says, hey, yeah, not without my consent. That's how, and it's interesting in the 1997 movie we were talking mm-hmm. about consent, right? Which is fascinating to me that yeah. in 1997 we were willing to have that conversation. Yeah. When sometimes in that day and age that wasn't a part of the conversation. Totally. It's really I think I I don't know I get a kick out of that. So we <laughs> so then Bruce Willis goes did he go back to his house? Yeah. Which is basically a storage unit. Yeah. And so then he finds out that he's he's been fired. He's been fired. He got that notice. <laughs> oh, here's an ironic thing. Apparently his boss. Is the art dealer we come across in the yeah. future? Yeah, Sorg. so oh. all kinds oh of interconnections. I love the drive-through Chinese guy. Yeah, Chinese yes. food. Yep. Yes, they come to your house. You yep. don't have to That's go. Awesome. Off. His, his yeah. ship looks like a ship. <laughs> Another kind of ship. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's well, basically I mean, a futuristic food truck. Yeah, yeah, and it's really <laughs> it like, it's a like, boat. Again, it's a build, it. it's, it's a building of that world. The world is being built around us, and it's 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 it's, it's things that we would expect to have. Yeah. But it's done significantly differently enough. That it's like, oh, that's how the world would have evolved with with with, with Chinese restaurants or to-go meals or it's food trucks. And even in 1997, we didn't have food trucks really. No. So that was even a like, crazy like an idea that they were ahead of their time with this whole like, hey, there's a Chinese food truck or food ship or whatever. Um, so at this, we've we've kind of skipped over Gary Oldman a little bit. Um, Gary Oldman is the bad guy. Um, yeah. It, he He's is really, really good. good at being the bad guy. Oh, yeah, he is. Oh my gosh. He's so the the Zerg, I guess, or whatever their name are, the bat, the Zorg, the Zorg. The Zorg. Yeah. So the Zorg are his hired guns. Um, they're not very smart. They're basically just muscle. Uh, they're not really capable of negotiating. And so they are the ones that went to the wreckage to find the, the stones. box, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the stones. <laughs> and he opens it, and there's no stones. That Ooh. was my stones. Yeah, and he's like, "Well, we got you don't get the baggage." He's like, and he makes a joke with his like assistant. He's like, "If you were a killer." You would have asked what that flashing red button was on the bottom of the, the gun. gun. Yeah. And then, boom! Oh, yeah, the infamous video game gun right here. Yeah. It's got everything. It's got uh, flechette bullets. It's got yeah. a net. It's got the yeah. flamethrower. Yeah. It's got missiles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't ask about the red button but, on yeah. the bottom of the gun. Gotta yeah. ask about the red button. It's like, don't press red button. No. In every story. So then he, <laughs> that's, this, this is where the firing of, the because of the situation, he says, well, fire 500,000. No, fire a million. Yeah. Okay, I'll fire a million, sir. And that's how we end up, he ends up losing his job. Mm-hmm. Um, so he is home. The, the first thing he gets to notice, fire, and then the, you know, the, the food truck guy is like, oh, so it sucks. Because he's like, oh, good things are happening. And he's like, no. 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 Like, I'll bet <laughs> you lunch, it's not. Good things are not happening. And then he he went, he found he gets a call from his mother. You've won in a while. Why aren't you taking me with you? Blah, 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 blah. Like, what are you talking? And he's about? like, I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't I haven't got any mail. And then, <laughs> boom, yep, <laughs> perfect timing. And he's like, Oh, I've won a thing and whatever. He's like, I'm not. And he's but then who shows up at his door? Mm. Well, who shows up first? The general. The government yes. shows the up. first. Government shows up and yeah. says, Hey, guess what? That thing you won, you rigged the contest. We rigged the contest. And they're talking about how Smith. And then the priest and Lilo show up. <laughs> and, and they have sh- to hide the government real fast. <laughs> well, the Government's like, hey, you can take this woman on your trip. And again, the male gaze in this movie is so her buns. It's <laughs> she looks like, yeah, it's it's. Oh. She's trying to be Princess Leia, but, but not. Bad. not no, she's working. she's 
she's she's not what <laughs> she's not what what Bruce Willis probably wants to take on a trip. She's like taller than him. yeah. She's she's like Helga, the Swedish <laughs> yeah. masseuse, who's really been working. Or like out. that woman in Robin Hood, um, Men in Tights. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's German lady. She's got she's got some some muscle and some bulk to her, and so he's she, like. She no. reminds me of uh, the the mean lady in Matilda. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were definitely going for a trench aesthetic. bull. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, they were definitely going for a trench bull aesthetic. <laughs> and he looks at me and says, "No, I'm not doing it." And he's like, "But, but." And then, so then the doorbell rings, and he goes, "Okay, get in the fridge." Yeah, yeah. he slams them and all in the freezer. And he gets all of them all in three. there. If we can't fit, I guess you will. <laughs> you will. <laughs> <laughs> and then he sends them down, and then the the priest and Lilu show up. Oh, poor Lilu. And they are talking about what's you know what da 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 and I. And he find he's there because he knows that he won the contest and he's going to take Lilu with him. Yeah. And so he's trying to figure out a way. <laughs> he thinks he's going. And well, the, and then what happens is the police show up. Yeah. And so, so he's got to stash so them he, away. He stashes Lilu in the shower and the priest in his bed, bed. <laughs> which Saran wraps him for some reason. Yeah. yeah. It's like that, that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. I, that's so, kind of suffocated. Ugh. So the police show up, and his so the car that was on his front door, Lilu grabbed it. I told you she moved it. She moved She's it. She's the one that moved it. She moved it. it over to the other door. Yeah. And so the police show up, and they what? And this is the one plot hole that probably is in this movie is is that it would not matter whose car you would know who lives in which house. Fair. The police would be like, he lives in this one. We're going for that one. But th- again, movie movie magic. Yeah. They go to the other guy, and so. He puts his hands on the yellow lines, and the police are like, okay, you know, whatever. And they go to his, the one where the sticker is, and his neighbor who is unwell mentally. Yes. <laughs> significantly unwell. They say, put your hands. He's like, no, 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 no. Oh, arrested. And they, yeah. Well, they, like, put him in a, they put him in a bag. Yeah, I think they tased him. Or yeah, they, they, you, just hear, you just hear this. <laughs> and he's like, bad idea. But what does Corbin Dallas call? He says he's a what? I identify as a something. Meat popsicle. Meat popsicle. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. I think that was actually he. That was a that was a line that he just made up. I think so. He said it. It was kind of one of those moments, like, "No, I'm a meat popsicle." <laughs> so it works out. So then he, <laughs> he has to get get everybody out of their places. So he first poor he Lilu get, comes down and soaking wet. And he's like, "Oh, I forgot about the rinse. I forgot about the rinse cycle." I'm like, what? <laughs> By a rinse cycle? Okay. And she's like, "Auto wash." So she's all soaked. Auto wash. So she's all soaked. So he gets uh, her out, and then he hears a. He's like, "Oh!" And she and then she says, "Priest." Yeah. And he goes, "Oh!" And he's like, barely like he's just encased in plastic, all to die. Rips that open, and oh. and then like because she's so soaked, of course she doffs her yeah. clothing. So the both men they flip around. <laughs> And Which happens like three or four times yeah. in this movie. But what I do appreciate about this movie is is that none of them take advantage. Yeah. None of them are like, oh, I can look or whatever. They just they respect that. Which again, in a 1997 movie, if if my memory is correct, there are not a lot of 1997 movies that treated women well within the context of how the storyline was built. That's accurate. No, so, yeah, and well, after after he tried to kiss her, I think everybody saw like, yeah. no, I, nope, no, don't, don't mess with her, don't mess with her, don't do it. <laughs> So yeah, they turn their back on her. She gets dressed, and then he knocks, he knocks out the priest knocks Bruce Willis out with and the medal and gets the tickets and gets the tickets. And he's like, oh da da da. And in this moment, I'm just like, you have no idea who you're messing with, priest. This is nope. not going to end well for you. No, it's not. And it doesn't, of course. So then he wakes up and he realizes, oh, the generals in the feet, fiti- and they're just frozen. They're frozen. And, but he takes the mission. He says, "I'll accept the mission," and then closes it back on them. Doesn't get him out. But then you see him later in the movie, and I'm like, how? I'm sure somebody came looking for him. <laughs> oh Thought him out a little bit. Maybe put some little. <laughs> I don't know what they did, but he survives. Yeah. I don't know about the rest of them. The general I don't does. <laughs> the other guys, maybe not. So we now get the most madcap, like. Yeah, this watching. is the part of the movie Aaron's like it's about to get interesting I'm like the movie's already interesting <laughs> what do you mean so it's it's like you watch those movies where it's like a, like the, the thing things are getting tossed or traded between people yeah. and it's like the it's like the game of the cup where the ball is on and you're like you're rolling it around so there's so many different people trying to be Corbin Dallas and yeah. Lilu. well like well, at hold least on. six I think we, we gotta go to where he goes to get the ticket back and you got Lilu in there just Mm, chicken, chicken. <laughs> yeah. it, oh. 
It's like I love rotisserie chicken. She yeah. loves it more. And and I, two I love... seconds in the microwave too. Yeah. Like yeah, she just puts the whole thing, and all of a sudden it's just fully. She's like chicken, chicken. <laughs> so in some ways she's like a child, but she's yeah. also like she knows everything. She's remembering things, and she's remembering her story, and she knows enough to go find the priest and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that that was that was kind of fun. So then she, so so first the the first person to end up at the ticket counter is. Um, the priest's son yeah. and Lilu, uh-huh. and he is terrified. He's super nervous. He's like, I, I'm, I'm Corbin to Dallas. But she's like, congratulations. He's like, what? Uh, oh yeah, I won something. Yeah, I won something. <laughs> and then Lilu's like, multi pass, multi pass, multi pass, multi pass. It's so like I it's her love, favorite word. I love how this character is portrayed and how Mila Jovovich, Mila, Jov- Mila Jovovich, Jovovich portrays it oh, because God. it's just absolutely like. You know she's really good at what she she's a big strong monster of a creature. Yeah. But there's this childlike just like multi pass. <laughs> multi pass. <laughs> yeah, just... you could well, you, yeah, you could tell like she's not of this world really. Yeah. And she I think, is a divine being. I think probably she had a lot of fun with this character. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. You you tell you say, Okay, you get to act like a child, but really get to throw some punches and have some fun. You'd be like, sign me up for that role. Let's yes. do this. Let's go. Uh so she so then <laughs> Bruce Willis catches up with him and literally like grabs him and yep. says, Thanks. Oh man, I'm so sorry, Lee. I'm Corbin Dallas. And he hold, and she's like, multi pass. <laughs> no, she knows it's a multi pass. It's okay, then you know. Multi pass. Multi pass. <laughs> <laughs> so they get it, they get checked in, they get on board the plane. Yep. And then Corbin number three shows up. Yeah. yeah so then the the, a the Zorg, the Zorg shape shifted. Two Zorgs in dis- <laughs> disguise. And, and he's like changing yeah, in front of her. Well, and there's good technology, so she's able to see with this technology. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's just, just like, we just need a minute for it to configure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that so then they, they leave because mm-hmm. they, they find out they're going to get discovered. Um, and then our so last... buddy. His yeah. other buddy. His assistant or whatever. Yeah. So he shows up, and now I'm Carbon Dallas. And she's like, no, you're not. And then we're closed. Yeah. <laughs> But how do, who do I talk to? And then he bangs on the window and the guns yeah. pop out. <laughs> this is a police action. Put your hands in the yellow circle. Which keeps like, coming up. Yes. Yeah. He's just like, oh, no, I didn't. I'm, I'm sorry. So that was that happened. So they get on board the ship. Um, unfortunately, our assistant dies because he goes to call. What's his bucket? The Zorg. He, Zorg. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I couldn't get on. He was already on. He's like, well, you know what I'm disappointed with? And it he blows up the entire like station like around it with uh-huh. the phone like he sends a bomb it's, it's crazy is this yeah. the part where he gets the call from like the shadow that comes later okay yeah that's a bit later creepy. that comes a little later so yeah he blows up his assistant because the assistant finally screwed up enough that he's like i'm done with you so they get on the ship and uh we <laughs> yeah, priest manages to get on he is yeah. impressive he is so he's he, very impressed he climbs into the resourceful the the, the the landing gear yep. and gets through there because he doesn't want to miss it and he knows that he's in trouble if he doesn't f- at least follow along and so then he yeah so we get on board we meet chris rock's character ruby rose ruby so rose funny. You said Chris Rock. Yeah, Chris Rock. No, no it was Chris, Chris Tucker. Tucker. Chris Tucker. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a There's terrible a, connection. Yeah, they're very different. They're both, To yeah. be fair, when I was younger, I would always get them confused. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Chris Tucker, I yeah. think, is a probably a more influential acting career than Chris Rock has. Uh, Chris Tucker, of course, obviously, Rush later, hour. In, later in life, Rush Hour. And Beverly all that. Hills Ninja. Yeah, Beverly, yeah. He was, you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> yeah. It's my favorite just, line. Just so, yeah, you couldn't make a movie like that now. You couldn't make Rush Hour now. They, no, it's they, so people would be, irreverent people and would be very, they offensive. Made three of those. Did you know that? They made three Rush Hour movies. I knew Friday. at least two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, <laughs> they I made, heard they're working on a fourth one. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> I think I think we I think we the trilogy is enough. Much like Indiana Jones Fair. and Back to the Future and a bunch of but other I, movies. I, I second that. I feel like once you start getting past three you, you, Unless you're Godzilla. Or Star Trek. Okay. <laughs> Star Trek and Godzilla. Oh, those diehard Star Trek. And Star Wars <laughs> falls into that. You should have stopped yeah. at the three. Just don't, no prequels, no, no, no. you're done, son. Yeah. <laughs> Please sit down and let somebody else make amazing movies that are sci-fi. Because mm. Anyway, we're not going to talk about Star Wars today. We already talked about that before. Back to Chris Tucker. Back to Chris Tucker. So Chris Tucker's character. He's like a 
Ah, Radio hey, host. On. Over the top celebrity. <laughs> yeah. He Flamboyant. Is, I was yeah. like, is this really how he is or is this the character? No, this is really how he is. Yeah, that's the yeah. vibe. <laughs> Chris, Chris Tucker is out of control in this role. Oh, and it's I, so great. I kept looking at it until I ended up get this. I would have been so much fun to play. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. So this scene, my communications teacher actually used it as an example of... Uh, Confidence. confidence okay and so like when she, he's walking down and like doing all of his his scatting and his jam and yeah and he holds the microphone up to uh corbin and corbin just goes hi <laughs> so it's like you got ruby over here yeah. that is exploding confidence yeah. and then corbin who is not yeah. My defense in that class was, I don't think he was lacking confidence. I think this man was confused. <laughs> but yeah. he also didn't care. He was like, I have a mission. Yeah. I don't even want to be here. Right. <laughs> what Get are out doing? of my way. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Yeah. And he loses Lilu for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I, my reaction still after after even watched this movie as many times as I've had, watching it at the time, I was like, where does Lilu get to? <laughs> and I mean, I guess she just finds her way into the, into the yeah. sleeping quarters. But it's just like, how did you, what? And he doesn't yeah. seem concerned about it. No. He just is like, oh, well, she's on her own. I'm like, how do you let the fifth element get out of your hands? <laughs> Everyone is looking for this woman. They're trying to take control and use her to take over the world. And I mean, he- honestly, Chris oh, Tucker's character is very distracting. Yeah. yeah. He's like in a lot to handle. <laughs> yeah. He's so I kind of get it. He he owns the screen whenever he's on. Yeah. It. He's got yeah. that riz as the character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. An overwhelm an overdose of riz. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I told my teacher too. I was it like so much. It's still going. We're good. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> I just always, I'm always looking back to my like, oh, okay. I can't see it. Um, so yeah, that's oh, man. It's a it's a ride. So there's a couple things we can't talk about because Chris Tucker engages in relations with one of the stewardesses, um, and in that that whole scenario is just not. We're not we're not going to talk nope. about it. Um, but he's hilarious. He does. He flirts with anything and everybody. <laughs> Literally. So that part and, we and, and mostly anybody and everybody is just like, oh, he's amazing. Yeah. And, and Bruce Willis is just like, like, no, you're an idiot, and I don't like you. <laughs> but everyone else worships. And I mean, obviously, he's a he's a megastar. Like, yeah. he's earned his place. He's Prince. Yeah, he's he's Prince <laughs> in Chris Tucker role Fashion. form. <laughs> yeah. I I would I don't know if if all in all honesty if Prince could have done that role to the level that Chris Tucker no, pushes it. And the main thing is cuz you know Prince has that deep voice. Yeah. And Chris Tucker has that high voice. Yeah, and there's no way Prince could have talked that fast either. Well, yep. And I it, Prince has already struck me as someone who takes himself very seriously. Yeah. And I feel like a big charm of this character is they don't. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> yeah. You can tell Chris Tucker's having a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. so I want to so know much how much he like improved most of that. Probably mostly all of it. <laughs> I can <think, laughs> see that. <laughs> it's awesome. So yeah, he can, he he just continues to run wild, and, and Bruce Willis' his character is just, I am done with this. Get me out of here. <laughs> Uh, so at this point, and then at the end of it, it kind of reminds me of like I don't know when I've dressed up as an alien, no. and like how you reacted yeah. to that when we went to an event together. You were like you wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like turning it up, and people were laughing and taking pictures, and Aaron was like walking over to another corner and yeah. talking to somebody. <laughs> it's very similar. Yeah, you're just not into it. Sim- similar, <laughs> similar feels. Not to the level of Chris no, Tucker. N- no, no, I wasn't doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, there was. <laughs> so <laughs> his little posse is like, yeah, trying to make him feel good about yeah. that segment. It was great. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. And he looks at Bruce Willis, and Bruce Willis is like, "I don't care." Yeah, he's like, "We got to step this up." For Honestly, tonight. it's literally like, "What do you think of that event, Aaron?" You're like, "I don't, I don't like this part." Yeah. Of you. <laughs> well, and he, like Bruce Willis's character, says, "You d- tomorrow between five and seven, you're not like." He just basically says, "No, I'm not doing it. You're not making me do it." But he ends up actually having to do it. Because well, he's sitting next to him yeah. at an event, so yeah. he has no choice. Yeah, he doesn't have a choice. So we get the so we get so they get on the board of the ship and then we meet the diva. And she is absolutely very unusually an alien. And I love how they went with this because they made her beautiful but without being like too much. It was an an, an, ethri, an oh boy. ethereal. Thank you. An ethereal beauty yeah, because tall she's and, mm. She walks the hallway. She has the, the the thing on her face. But what's interesting is she sees and senses Lilu mm-hmm. and says, duh, 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 duh. and the, so the person goes and talks to her and says, "Hey, she will come to you after the concert. She will have the stones for you." Yada yada yada. Yeah. Knowing what you know now, though, yeah. After watching a whole next minute, next 15, 20 minutes, how she was going to give her the stones is a very unusual conversation and how it was going to work. Anyway, 
Uh, so we'll get. Well, they that. had to get in there somehow. Yeah, they also had to be implanted in here. <laughs> so if you're listening along, we finally find out very soon that the stones are actually in no containers. They are actually implanted inside of the diva, in her body as a protective measure. I'm guessing. What a sacrifice. Yeah, because she would have to eventually, probably die to get those stones yeah, out. Yeah, I, mean, I know. That's what I think. Yeah. Um, we kind She's of... an alien. She might have like a little compartment that opens. Oh up my! God. We don't know. <laughs> we skipped over something that's kind of important. Okay. Go um, for it. when he goes into the chamber, like the be- the sleeping quarters or whatever with Lilu, um, she says something like, "No, I'm here to protect you." Yeah. And I think that's very poignant is for she, something is, that happens later. She just tells him like, "Go sleep" or something. Like yeah. That. <laughs> Because he th- he thinks that he's like going to be the one protecting her, but really she's the one yeah. protecting ev- the whole universe, basically. Yeah. yeah, it's an interesting kind of combination of like I'm here to protect you, you're here to protect me. Like there's back and forth. They're yeah. not. Neither of them are like the protectors. Neither of them are helpless. They're both equally empowered to do what they need to do. Yeah. Um, it is interesting later on that Lilu does become helpless and needs to her, him to rescue her and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because obviously she does get shot up. Like. They don't really show us how how badly she was injured, but I mean, but she got she got she got beat up in that mm-hmm. in that in that um, little vent system area when yeah. he was shooting at her. Um, so, what happens next is we go to the concert. Yeah, and <laughs> it's what's interesting is is that I think they actually they either shot that in a theater or they built it or something. It's, there's not a lot of CGI going on. Mm-mm. There's a lot of actual people in the audience. Yeah, um, we do get the what are the Zorg? So the Zorg are in the in the house. And they are, they go to the quarters and they shoot. Here's, so here's the thing I did disagree with. I didn't like how quickly they just, dis, they dis, disassembled the, the diva's protection detail. They just literally like, boom, 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 it was it. Like they were yeah. portrayed as real, like ninja strong. Like you could, you wouldn't mess with them. And yet they were just able to be like, yeah, bye, you're dead. Bye bye. Yeah. It made me sad because I was like, oh, <laughs> they seemed like they were, they were, they were that good for a reason. Maybe just because the Zorg are just blunt objects and they can blow anything up. So then the Zorg, they get, they get, <laughs> they grab the case. Or no, they don't grab the case. Do they grab the case? Yeah, they grab the case. Mm-hmm. They grab yeah. the case. Um, do they, and they take it to... Well, then he comes in and basically kills them and takes the case. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, and he's mad because he's got to do it himself. Okay, so this, so the scene before this is when he comes into contact with the shadow. Mm-hmm. This is a whole new thing. Because for me, when I was watching this, I'm like, oh, this is this idiotic art dealer. Like, yeah. the world's going to end. Like, what are you just making it for your collection for six yeah. hours? And then yeah. you find out who he's working for. And you're like, Ooh. And the connection between the thing you've seen in the first part of the movie is now understanding that this, this, the shadow, the planet, has been contacting him. Yeah, and it's a sentient being. It's actually. a sentient being yeah. who's, who can't do his own dirty work. Right. So he found somebody who was just as evil as he was. And used him to put the whole thing in motion, and um, and made him bleed from yeah. the head. He was intimidating him. Yeah, he was like, "You will do this, and you will." Rah, 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 and he's just like, "Blood is pouring down." Like it was just real like, slow. Just that it's like a little yeah. bit, mm-hmm. just enough to unnerve you. I love how it almost looks like oil. Yeah. Well, it's obviously fake. But. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think it. Well, we don't ever find out why he has the implant on his head. Yeah, but it's like all of his people have some weird. Yeah. Thing. So there's something there, yeah. and there's some creature. Is it connected to him, or is it his pet? Mm. Oh, understand. that poor little elephant thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You Aaron fast forwarded through this part, so I don't really when understand. He, yeah, what when, the pre, when he was choking and the priest saved him or whatever, I just was like, yeah. which that's crazy because he didn't have to save him, but he did. Yeah. So another another one of those things like if he hadn't <laughs> saved him, this whole movie wouldn't have been. It would have ended kind yeah, of. Yeah, <laughs> done. But maybe because he's a priest and he has to actually save a life in the end. I, you know, right. Who knows. Mm. So we the Zor- so he shows up, kills the Zorg, gets the plates or gets the that's the case, yep. gets on his ship, and I think he flies away. And then opens it. No stones. And no stones. And he just and he's like <laughs> he's like laughing and puke. He's like and there's no stones. And so he's like huh. So he turns back around. And, and he, had, he had put a um, bomb. bomb. Yeah, yeah, he had put a bomb. So now there's time is running out on it. So he goes back. In the meantime, in between time, um, the Zorg have gone nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, they have tried. They're taking over the ship, and they've shot people, and they are herding them all into the main promenade area. Um, and at some point, they shoot Diva. They shoot. Well, they shoot Diva because Chris Rock. All right, Chris Tucker. Come here, come here. Uh, <laughs> Chris Tucker come on, come on. doesn't does he shoot come on, come on. and then the and then the the Zorg, the Zorg shoot the diva? No, 
She gets shot before that. Okay, so she gets <laughs> shot before that. And so Bruce Willis is like in like, oh my gosh, what how like how and she's like, You you have to, to protect her, she's gonna need you. And then he she goes and he goes, Where are the stones? The stones are in me. And he's like, What? And he and then he he looks at her her injuries like Oh, they're in her. <laughs> like literally in her. And, Chris, and Tuck- Chris Tucker's freaking out. And that's the point I say out loud. Well, you could have Bruce Willis's job. Yeah. For real. Who's yeah. taking the stones out. It's like, so he, oh, it's he so pulls gruesome. all the stones out of her. He hands them to Chris Tucker and says, <laughs> keep this safe. Which in my mind, I'm like, are you, you're trusting this guy? This idiot? The pop star who has no kid. Like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the guy you choose. I guess you don't have anybody else to choose from. Honestly, well, he yeah. Knows, he knows that Ruby's not going to leave his side. Yeah, Ruby wants to live. Yeah, <laughs> Ruby is desperate to live. They're coming! They're coming! Well, he's giving like a play-by-play on the radio. He's yeah. actually being kind of helpful. Yeah. So the, the government is all is listening in and watching, and the, they cut in and back and forth with the president, and he's just staring at the general, going. Like, this was your plan. This isn't gonna work. And he's like, and they gotta get to my favorite line. I don't think yeah, we're there yet. No, no. Not. So the general yeah. says, no. He he has a way of calming things down. I can't handle this. I'll Doesn't fine. calm it down at all. There is no calming. No. So we get. So he he see, he gets out of the. He shoots the guys. Gets out of the amphitheater, and then basically storms the promenade and shoots a whole bunch of Zorg. Yep. Um. And like has to like find a way to hide and. Uh, it's it's uh, a lot of Chris Tucker screaming. Yeah, a lot of that. Oh, gosh. It is. What do I do? What do I do? Yeah, this this scene, <laughs> this whole setting, and this scene is. I just love it because it's so much action and it's so much like boom explosions. Yes. Um, I love. So there's an actor who is like the w- world's best actor, but he's deaf. Yeah. Not even and just like he's like he just smart can't, as a yeah. Yeah, he's, not very, he's not very smart either. So he's not only is he hard of hearing. I shouldn't say deaf. He's hard of hearing. I probably from all his action movies that he's uh-huh. done, and he isn't that smart. He is really I uh, know, and he's got a bunch of people around him who keeps telling him how wonderful he is. Yeah, it's all the girls in his in his little little groupie. Yeah, and no room like, for oh, growth. La, 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 Makes you stagnant. And so he, like Bruce Willis, is like gets trapped behind the bar, and there's multiple rockets have exploded around him. He's like, hey, you know, give me the gun, the gun. And he like hands him two balls. Yeah, he rolls it through. <laughs> and he through. smiles at him like, yeah, I helped you, didn't I? <laughs> He's like, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> and so then he like gets like surrounded by the guys and then he's like, no, I'm just an innocent bystander. I'm unarmed. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot right. me. And then he- Poor Chris Tucker's above the silly disc going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then when he sends this dork up there, yeah, he, I think I, I said next moment he's like, I think he's trying to tell the whole lot to him, so he's holding his head. He's right. just going, ah! And then the Zorg shoots all the other Zorgs, <laughs> and yeah, this it, is crazy. And that's about the part that this explosion happens. So yeah, and there's a fact that you told me about it. Yeah, so he they hit the guy down, and then Bruce Willis grabs the gun and shoots Chris Tucker down to his level yeah. so that he lives, and then he shoots like a rocket thing mm-hmm. underneath. And says, let's go. And, and they, he's like, start counting. Yeah, start counting. <laughs> and so they count. And so the explosion that happens um, at that time was the largest explosion on a set. Wow. In ni- at that point, up until 1997, until that point. So that that's all practical. That is the entire set going. <laughs> um, which is awesome and amazing and yeah. terrifying to think about all the pyrotechnics that had to go into that. So... And insurance. Yeah, all the liability <laughs> and all yeah. that stuff. Oh, Paperwork. Boy. Wow. So, and it's just fun because it's all. This is an action movie through and through. It is without question. It is fast paced for yeah. sure. You you yeah. don't get a lot of time chance to breathe. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Has an interrogation coming up. There's a terror. Uh, well, all the Zorgs have. Okay, so they have. They have. They have the priest. Yeah, that's they have, who it they is. Have the priest. So then they're they're basically everyone's. There's an alarm that is the alarm hasn't gone off yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're, they're, they're trying to find the leader. So Bruce Willis, you know, f- gets a gun finally, um, doesn't know where Lilo is still. Lilo is still trapped and suffering and he's, his mind is on trying to get the ship back. So they, <laughs> this is where your favorite line comes into play. Yes. So he ends up at outside the control room. Yeah. And the guy that we've been following throughout this movie, the guy who was introducing, he was a ship crewman who got the the diva into her room, and he's like, ah, da, 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 uh, welcome, 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 and he's like very nervous and stuttering. Or is this like, talk to me? This is the information. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> tell me. So he gets he, Bruce Willis rolls up beside him, and he says, you know, 
who's what's who's in charge here? I, I, I guess I am, because everyone else apparently is either dead or has ran away. And he's like, I've never I've never done a negotiation in my life. And Bruce Willis <laughs> says, Can I give it a try? He's like, Sure. And he said, and then he's and then he says, We're sending in a negotiator. <laughs> Bruce Willis turns around the wall, walks in. Shink, points at the lead. Oh no! He says they find out who the leader is. Yeah. And he like, says oh, once God. we know who the leader is, yeah. they won't fight anymore. And he's yeah. like, and the guy's like, oh, we got the priest. We'll shoot everybody. And he's like, there's the leader. And so he turns after the whole negotiation line, walks in and shoots the leader, not takes him down. And um, <laughs> the the general, the president said, or somebody said, oh, I think it's the assistant who's like, wow, well, where did you learn to negotiate? And the president's just like glaring, going. I wonder. <laughs> yeah, so my favorite. Yeah, so the yeah the assistant the assistant and then the guy, general the other guy just sheepishly like yeah. walks off. It's such a combination of a fun little line where it's like, I "Wonder where you learned that? Where, where did you learn how to negotiate like that?" And it just immediately flips over to the command center, and then president's like, "Gee, I wonder where." Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so now is when they find they go find Lilu, and they find the bomb. Yeah. Yep. Group. <coughs> <laughs> Ruby's just like, wait, should there be an alarm going off? Like, bow, bow. <laughs> and it immediately just like, eh, eh, eh. Yep. and everyone freaks out and runs and panics. Stay calm, stay, stay calm. calm, stay calm. <laughs> and so everyone, everyone gets off the ship. Yep. That that mar- that part we do know. Um, but what's funny is is that so what's his bucket head head guy Zorg <laughs> Zorg yeah. um, head guy head guy I don't know. <laughs> anyway, he comes back, leaves his ship. Runs to goes like takes his t- t- makes a beeline to go turn off the bomb. At and five seconds, five seconds has a little card. Um, so then it when, just drops while out. he's doing that. Um, the rest of them are ha- they they don't have they've run out of ships to, to get on. Yeah, and they find Zorg's ship. So they go on his <laughs> ship. Yeah, and they and he's like, I was just like flying a cab. How are we gonna get through that door? <laughs> Blows out the door. <laughs> just like it, there, this movie doesn't care. It is just like we gotta get. We have plot. We have to get to the plot. Yeah, we're gonna blow our way through the door and get to that plot. And Zorg's little minions, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. set up a bomb for him, like a backup bomb. Well, I don't even know if it was a backup bomb. I think it was just they were like, if they didn't succeed, they were just gonna they were gonna blow up the yeah. ship. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and it so, was just perfect timing. It had nothing to do with him. I mean, they don't like him anyway because he's a jerk. Yeah. And he's a bad boss. <laughs> but so yeah, so he he gets it and it stops, and he's like. Oh, and then you flash to the promenade, or one of the guys is like, for yep. for the for our draw for our uh, something along the lines of like for our not drama for our <laughs> pride or something like that for our pride or for, for honor for our, yeah for our honor mm, sounds better. <laughs> and then he looks and this big old like yeah. five seconds left. And he's like, oh. <laughs> in your yeah. face. Yeah, he, he he's hoisted by his own petard, as they would say in the, in the Shakespearean yeah. times. And so now we only have one bad guy left. Yep, yep. the big... The, the big, big one. The big Shadow. bad. So this is really... The movie, it does this really expertly because most movies, when they come to the epic conclusion, it's going to be an explosion-fueled debacle. Hmm. But with this movie... We've already had that with the ship. The, I mean, the, the cruise ship blows up yep. as they all get out. So that's happened. We've blown. We've done our big explosions. Now it's time for us to finally get to the end. And what's fascinating is how this movie is structured. Is the ending is pretty quiet. Now it's fast it's paced and it's tension filled, but there's no like brrr, t- timer or fire or explosions. Right. It's all created around the moment where we need to get Lilu to do what she needs to do. Now, the precursor to this is Lilu watched a movie on war. She searched for it, and she saw all the terrible things humans have, humans have done in war. And they're all historical. They're all real events that have happened. Um, and she just gets really upset and, and sad about that. And kind of conflicted. Like, yeah. should yeah. I save them? Like, Yeah, are they worth saving? Yeah. And that's a question she does ask Bruce Willis towards the end of, are you worth saving? And he does say, we are. Like, there's good in us still and whatever. So she... So the... What I love about this is, is that we don't know how this is supposed to work. No, we don't. We have we have not been shown uh, this. Yeah, we just they, know there needs they, to be stones in her. Yes. Yeah. They, they figure it out on accident. They do. Yeah. And what I love about this is that any other movie would have probably have shown us this thing. And we would have been like, come on, guys, come on. But we don't know. Mm-mm. And so we have to just hope that they're going to figure it out. And I think that lends to this movie having that sense of risk of, well, there's a chance they're not going to figure it out. You know they're going to figure well, it out. Yeah. But there's that artificial element of, Oh god! This we gotta is, hurry, hurry, hurry! Yeah, we gotta move, we gotta move, we gotta move. Well, the guy's counting down. Yeah, he's they get the, the general and and the guys yeah. at the presidency, and they're they're basically they've given up hope. Mm-hmm. 
this whatever it is is coming to Earth. It's moving very quickly, yeah. and it's it's gonna take and and it's what's interesting is we we know it's we've understand it's a planet, and so he they, yeah. So they're trying to figure out she and she says this this and this like uh, water, fire, wind to blow, fire whatever, <laughs> and they don't understand it really until he. <sighs> sigh. What'd you do? What did you do? Show, 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 show. I said this, and then he doesn't do anything, but then he does the sigh again. And yep. yep, it opens up a little more and starts glowing. And um, yeah, so that, yeah, so then they figure it out. Oh, well, okay, so wind blows. Okay, now water runs mm-hmm. and fire fires or whatever. And so he, the priest, thankfully, has, has been wiping his brow <laughs> yeah. ex- because of all the panic and the terror and the fear. So hooray for that. For real. Hooray for anxiety. <laughs> Yay. It saves, helps in this situation. Saves the day. But he, he does it and then... And then Bruce Willis. And I love what this movie does because this movie is like, don't blow. Don't nobody move. The, if the movie really had, had wanted to really punch it, the, the, the match would have gone out or something yeah. would have happened. But it doesn't. Uh, yeah, it, I, it's the last match too, and yeah. they they set it up to be like a very tense moment, and yeah. it's just not. Yeah. It's just it just works. Yeah, we have just Chris works. Tucker over here. Like, I need fire. Anybody got some matches, some lighters? I stopped smoking. I, if you would have told me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's yeah. panicking, but maybe less than yeah. before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there. So then it's and the symbolism obviously is Bruce Willis. You see in his quarters, he's trying to quit smoking. There's a little mechanism. And it's like this. Yeah, he's, he's like not. okay. Today's cigarettes just pictured the f- the filter and the actual cigarette part reversed. Yeah. yeah, like the filter is like three inches long, and, <laughs> and the cigarette itself is like maybe half an inch or so. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of hilarious. So yeah, so he he gets his match, yeah. and it works, but it doesn't do anything because yeah. guess what? lilu has got to activate. She's got to do. She's got to believe. She's got to be wanting to do this, and so. This is the one moment where I felt we kind of we didn't quite jump the shark, but we sort of kind of brushed up against the shark. With the, I need to tell you something. What do you need to tell me? I'm just like, just tell you, lover, you big old. Well, that's what the priest says. He's like, just tell her, right? And I think I, it was a little bit artificial. It felt a little bit false. Like up until this moment, like we know that he likes her, mm-hmm. but I don't. I don't feel like the movie did enough to say, yeah, the Bruce Willis character does love Lilu. Like there wasn't enough. Like yeah, he rescued her from the air duct, and yeah. he br- he brought her back to health, and he cleaned her wounds and all that stuff. But he doesn't really. There's not really that like. Well, it's not really a relationship. They yeah. haven't had a lot of. He doesn't really know her. Yeah, and I think that could have been solved if there'd been some conversation. Yeah. About his ex-wife because they're <laughs> the ex-wife ran off with his other boss or some such his nonsense. His lawyer. Mm. Yeah, his lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> this is longer. Yeah, that's. But we don't Yeesh. get a lot of that. But I think if that could have been an avenue of being like, you know, she could ask like, well, what is love? Because maybe she's learning about it or she's trying to remember it. And he's like, well, love. You know, what what is what was they love could to have you? talked on the ride over instead of him going to sleep. Yeah, that would have been a good time. Yeah. So there's there's some elements that could have made that moment feel like it was earned, and I think that's one of the weaknesses of this movie. But yeah, eventually he says, "I love you," and then they kiss, and then. Psh- <laughs> yeah, she explodes. She explodes Basically. with with power and energy. With and, light. <laughs> yeah, it's her her power shoots out from the planet and impacts the darkness and basically transforms it into a dead planet. Yeah. Um, so we now have another planet in our immediate solar system next to the sun, which is an interesting scientific conversation that I'm not having because I don't know what that would do to it or anything. <laughs> you know who you can ask about yeah, that. Yeah, we, we, have, we have a St- we have, we have Stefan, our St- Stefan's science, Stefan and I science podcast. We actually probably will talk about that because I'd, I'd be curious to see. Right. Anyway, so the movie, the movie doesn't end. So no. the part we, we can sort of talk about, we can't really talk about. So <laughs> they so transport funny. them back to Earth, obviously, and they put them in the, the little chamber where they originally created Lilu. To so heal they, so or they something? Heal them, yeah. To heal them both. Um, and so the president arrives and says... To celebrate them. To, to celebrate them. But, and then... <laughs> His mom, Bruce Willis's mom's call. Mom's call. He's like, oh, the, you know, his mother's mother's calling. Oh, I'll talk to her. I can't believe why you're not the president. You don't know stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and he just he just kind of gingerly holds it out, and it gets and it passed. gets passed around like a hot potato. <laughs> it's just like no I don't one wants to it. talk to this woman. Um, so that's yeah. So then he's like, well, can I see them? And he's like, well, no, they're not re- quite ready. And he goes over and he looks in, and. We will see in a moment what they're doing. But he's like, no, they're not ready. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I've got twenty. I've got twenty of the meetings. I got. And then 
we get the scene where obviously they're in the they're in the chamber, they're having relations, uh, kissing and things, and so it's just it's a cutesy way to end. Yeah. Like I get yeah. why we because yeah, they really do <laughs> apparently love each other, and they're you know whatever, and so yeah, that's how the movie ends. There it is. Well, here again, love wins. Yeah, love yeah. wins. Same thing. I so yeah, it's I wish to, to your point, Phil. I wish we had gotten. Oh, well, oh. I wish we had gotten. I wish we had gotten a sequel. Um, yeah, and I wish we would have gotten like because you think about it, like there is, the, you've got Lilu and you've got Bruce Willis now who are who are pretty good at what they do and they yeah. can fight the things. And what if there's another bad thing that's out there? And what if by Lilu unleashing her power? she then has modified powers. She doesn't have all of it. She just has some superpower stuff that she can use to fight. Or is she still a divine being at all? Right, is she? Yeah, and does she have to then recharge? Does yeah. she have to go somewhere to get that? Um, and what if there's... I, a- I would think that she was, She is, because, I mean, but the way that... She was made she, for the specific moment. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, the way that she's able to gather information so quickly, yeah. like that one scene where you walk in and she's, like, looking at the internet and it's just... Like basically Wikipedia of pages yeah. flying across yeah, the screen, she's and she's just it all. basically downloading it into her mind. Yeah, I, I think she she's still that. Well, um, and they talk about how every some hundred years they have to something will happen that will require her to be her there, to be. Yeah. So she's has happened. This has happened repeatedly, probably over time, in which she's been pulled into service and then put back in her case and put back in the pyramids and, and secured. Um, so that that would allow us to think that maybe there's a possibility, but obviously we can't do it because Bruce Willis is, is not is not capable of fulfilling the role anymore. And we can't have it without him. So. No, I don't think you. I <laughs> no, don't think it's you, not going to be the same. I don't think you could, and you'd have to have a whole other actress for mm-hmm. for Lilu because we not, too much time has passed for us mm-hmm. to even try and consider. But I think you're also in the argument of it would have to be a really great story, which is why it wouldn't be a good sequel because you'd have to have a solid... I think I think a prequel would yeah. be better. Because yeah. did you notice that like when the tissue that they use to reanimate her, yeah. uh, it's like in a glove? Oh, yeah, And yeah. that glove looks very similar to those the suits that the aliens were wearing oh, at the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wonder if she was like with them. Plus, they know about her. Okay, so that is actually an interesting point because in my brain, what I short circuited to is is that whatever was in the case was the fifth element. That's what I thought too. But with the thing that they recovered, it was the hand yeah, of the like alien hand. holding on to maybe the case. That's interesting, actually. Because I think it was like her hand, like in a glove made by those aliens or something. Because it looked yeah. a lot like their armor, their suits that yeah. they had. Yeah. And their ship there's just the so many. There's just so many. This universe is massive, yeah. and it leaves me with so many questions. Yeah, and I just I want to know more. Yeah. Well, and and I think that's a sign of a good movie. Is if it's well done science fiction, you're you want you are not told what the story is. You're not given this massive crawl at the beginning yeah. of like here's the story of Star Wars and the Trade Republic and da da da. You find <laughs> that out as you go. And explore and discover like this is the real truth. This is the actual. This this is this is the story. I'm gonna ma- imagine the background. That is interesting to think about actually, because yeah, that's it is a bit of a plot hole because we think of the massive case that they pulled out of there had the fifth element inside. I'll have to go back and watch now because I'm really curious <laughs> about where that hand was. The hand on the inside of the case that was broken open was there additional armor on the inside that that was what it was. Well, me and Phil say like every time we watch this, we learn something new. So yeah. it's like, you have to really, there's die. little, <laughs> little touches and stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, there you go. So more questions than answers when it comes to the fifth <laughs> element. I'm sure if we power up our Googles and we did some research, we'd find more information to, to, to answer those questions. Uh, I guess we'll go on with our rating for the fifth element. We'll start with Vicky. <laughs> At least a nine. This was really yeah. good. Yay! 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 It sang a lot for me because with me, sci-fi is very hit or miss. Yes. But no, I really, really liked it. Yay! Yes. Not at all what I expected. Yeah. Me? Uh, the it's, inf- it's infinite. Yeah. The, the highest number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Highest number. I love this movie so much. Yeah. Yes, 10 out of 10 classic. My dad actually took me to see this in theaters, and then we had okay. it on VHS, so nice. I love this movie. You know, I've always... So I've talked about how I love Star Star Trek and Star Wars. Star Trek is my jam. Um, that's my center. It's what I've always, science fiction always been. Um, but what I love about Fifth Element is it's a movie that asks you to do more. 
and makes you think more. Mm-hmm. To Phil's point, you want to know what the story is. Other science fiction that you watch, you're just like, okay, cool, that was great, moving on. Right. Um, but a movie like Fifth Element is there's a history, there's a story, and you there's there's got to be more that's it's out there to be told. And that's the power of good science fiction. So I would I would give it, given there's a few holes that I highlighted, some things I was like, mm, I would say like 9.0, 9.5. Um, they are better at predicting the future than back to the future. Yeah, that's true. Because oh, yeah, we still okay, have 200 so. <laughs> years to get to where they were. Yeah. So <laughs> I love how like they did, and this movie did get some of like the future right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We do have AI. Yep. Um, a lot of the stuff they got wrong still. Like they, they have headsets. Yeah. We don't really have headsets like that anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We, you know, we got like Bluetooth little things and mm-hmm. yeah. Their computers are still all like the green matrix type yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. They're actually computers. I don't think we would have, like, we got, a, every one of us has a computer in, in our, our pocket. In our phone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, yeah. so it's very interesting to see, like, what they thought the future would be. Mm-hmm. And I'm still waiting for those th- flying cars, man. This, this is one of those movies that, like, I can watch multiple times a year. Yeah. Easily, yeah, and I would like I would go. We, we purchased it actually for to own on Amazon because we. I, I was like, this is a movie that I do want to actually rewatch. Yeah, I want to enjoy again, and so yeah, I would definitely rewatch it again. And I would like, as a writer, I want to. I want to explore some of those. Not I wouldn't explore the fan, as a fan fiction, but I would want to explore like, okay, what's the what's the concept? What's the theme at play here? Yeah, um, because obviously the characters have depth and com- and complexity to them, and there's a lot to be told there. So I yeah I I I really like it, and I think. It's really so. What I referred to at the beginning of the episode, talking about Madam Web. Um, if you really want to have some fun, go search on YouTube for Madam Web reviews. Um, people are unhappy. Um, they are they, they the the writing is terrible. The, <laughs> there's not like the movie seems yeah, did to it again, Marvel. Yeah, way to go. You just keep good, keep doing what you're doing. Just please yeah. stop. Um, <laughs> They, t- they complained about like the fact that the movie sold them on the idea that there would be multiple characters. Nope, just the one. Uh, and so it's it's there's a lot of disappointment around how Marvel is like going forward. Um, it's just it's 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 there, there's the conversation right now, and it's alarming. But also like you done did it to yourself, Marvel. Is is the era of the superhero movie over? Because there hasn't been a lot of there's not, there's not been a lot of hits lately in the superhero world. Yeah, uh, like Marvels didn't do well. True. Like none of the recent Marvel projects have really succeeded in in the ways that they need to, and they're not they're not getting well reviewed. DC's better. And well, DC's got its own troubles as well. Yeah, like, they do. They they ended their universe. They're not doing that anymore. Yeah. I think in order for us to tell, we'll have to see how Deadpool. And Wolverine, but Deadpool's goes. always good. I yeah. Feel like. So here, that I think Dead, Deadpool's the outlier because you've got Ryan Reynolds, you've got mm-hmm. Hugh Jackman, like and they are they're rated R. They're not. Yeah, they, and so that I think will, they don't follow the formula. No, and they'll appeal to people. Um, but I think there's been conversation like Disney, like there's been a lot of conversation at a higher levels of these companies where like, like they're cutting employees, like they're cutting costs because it's not cheap to produce these things. Right, yeah. But it's also like, well, if you would stop producing so much of it, maybe you yeah. could afford to put out one good movie every couple of years. Um, and I think that's just kind of like, when you watch something like this, and you go, why can't we have this? Fifth Element was an original movie with an original idea, with an original universe that was deep, yeah. was thought out, was well-written, was well-researched, was well-illustrated. And what do we get? We get CGI junk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that everyone's like, that's CGI, that's CGI, and that's CGI, and that's not the believable. Um, a complaint I had. So I, you, if you, got, you guys don't want. You guys don't watch Doctor Who. I've seen it. Okay, so <laughs> the new episode, the new series is out. The with the new Doctor and David Tennant has been came back to kind of do a transference of power or whatever. Um, but He's there's my favorite b- one. Hmm? He's my favorite one. I, I After love. After him, I stop watching. I love David Tennant. I will say up until Peter Capaldi is when I my love of Doctor Who remained. Um, I did not watch after Capaldi, um, and I've I've only recently come because it's on Disney Plus now. That, yeah, so the, we just got Disney Plus. Yeah, so is Doc, it really? So Doctor Who's back on Disney is, is on Disney Plus. But here's the thing: there are there's some there's some elements in one of the episodes I was watching where it was very CGI, and it like I think part of the problem is, and I've had this conversation with somebody yesterday. I am old enough to know when we could do practical effects well. We could do a practical 
shoot and a setting well. Right. Yeah. We could do that. We could make it happen and we could supplement what we had with CGI. We could supplement it with special effects. But those were never supposed to be the main drivers of your story or your movie. Totally. And <clears throat> what has happened in Hollywood is we've become so reliant on a lot of that that it drives like Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad, the game, is just a, tra- it's a, tra- it's a travesty. It's a mess. But because we're so focused on having the flashy, shiny, Fortnite-y kind of like stuff that we forgot what it is to make a game that's actually kind of cool and yeah. has atmosphere and has something that, that carries through what you want in, like what you want to see. Um, and to that, like I've been seeing a lot of bad reviews for like uh, Skull and Bones. Oh my gosh, yeah. That game was in development for like 10 years. Yeah, and then you go back and look at Black Flag, and the animations are better. Yep. So there, there's actually been a couple of videos. I, so that's <laughs> hilarious because I've been I've been doing that too. Because I love an Assassin's Creed Black Flag. It is an absolute pirate game. It's a banger. It's amazing. It's legit. It does everything it's supposed to do. So the idea behind it was this. So Skull and Bones was supposed to be a DLC for Black Flag, but then they're like, "Oh no, we'll make a full game out of it." And people are just and what they so it's seventy bucks. It is seventy dollars, which is like any game now nowadays, but unless if it's indie. But you, one of the Ubisoft like presidents or executives came out and defended it and said, "Well, it's like a triple A game." No, quadruple. Quadruple was that what he said? Oh, yeah. My God, the nerve. <laughs> yeah, quadruple A game. And there's YouTubers out there who are like, and they did that. They pulled the footage from Black Flag, and they pulled it from Skull and Bones, and they literally yeah. showed this is this. This is tri- double, trip quadruple A versus what we had we could do in Black Flag. Yeah. And by far, overwhelmingly, the features and the activities and the world, bless you, is <laughs> in Black Flag is far superior than Skull and Bones. And that's why I haven't pulled that trigger. I'm not, I am not going to buy, I, I have not bought a lot of games recently because I'm like, I just, well, it's also like movies. Like, I'm not going to go watch a movie and give you $10 of yeah. my hard earned cash because you or yeah or more depending on where you go for a movie that's absolutely trash which is not well written which is not that I can stream later yeah it's like what what's yeah. the, what's the point of this um, I think I feel this is an I feel statement I feel like a lot of what is happening with a lot of the companies is they've put so much money into their streaming services that they don't have the money to do anything else because they thought oh well we'll just the streaming services will print money for us it'll make us all the money for all our because everyone and it's like yeah well. People didn't want to pay for Paramount Plus, CBS Plus, what all the all these services that you end up looking at your hands and going, I have ten streaming services <laughs> I am paying for. Yeah. Why? I Why actually, am I doing this? I actually, in order for us to watch Princess Bride, because you couldn't even rent it on YouTube, you could buy it for fifteen bucks. But, yeah. Uh, so I had to go and pick up Disney Plus again. Yep. And let me tell you, setting up Disney Plus. Yeah. Especially like if you had an account before and you can't remember your password and stuff. Yeah. It's hard. It's ridi- it took me yeah. like 15 minutes yeah. just to be able to get to the movie and watch yep. it. Yep. It was we, ridiculous. We've had that experience with a couple of our streaming services where we're trying to reactivate or re-engage. Yeah. And, and then with, with Disney Plus, it's like, okay, you know how like usually if you forget your password, you could just yeah. click forget password? Yeah. Disney Plus doesn't do that. They They will send you like a one-time code or something. That you can type in, and then it'll sign you in. You still don't know what your password is, is. but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank for you. That. <laughs> yeah. And then of course it's like ten bucks for like Hulu and Disney. Yeah. And then there's like a triple package for With ESPN or whatever. Yeah. And none of them say like with or without ads. Yeah. Of course we had ads. Yeah. Yep. So, so is, that ha- is that even with the triple package you still get ads? Yeah. Well, so we have we have Amazon Plus, we have Amazon Video or Amazon Prime or whatever. Yeah. And so we were like, oh, cool. Well, that gives us access to shows. So yeah. we was, we started watching a show. It's called Northern Exposure. It's from the late '80s, early '90s. It's a great little show. It's about Alaska. About nice. Alaska. <laughs> a doctor from New York gets thrown into backwoods, backwater Alaska, yeah. small town, whatever. And we were watching it, and all of a sudden, ads popped up. <laughs> and I was like, excuse me. And then I remembered oh. that there was an article I read where Amazon, with their with some of their video stuff, their shows. That you could pay two ninety nine to remove the ads from your Amazon Prime ex- video experience. Mm-hmm. We did because I was like, I'm, it's okay, it's three, it's three bucks. But here's the thing: this is what's going to push people too far. Yeah. People are going to be like, 
because we canceled a lot of our streaming, mm-hmm. so we got rid of Netflix. We got we got we jumped ship on a lot of that stuff. Like, like we don't even really watch this. Yeah, we, we when we do, it's like once a week right. or whatever. But you have to then to to validate spending that money on that pro on that product. You have to make time to sit down and watch on that platform. And you're talking Netflix, Paramount Plus, all of them, Peacock, the every like you have to then set aside a significant amount of your time of your day of your life to say, oh well, we paid for it. We should watch something on it. Well, and then they trade stuff all the time, yep, yep. which is also annoying. Yep. And so there's, there, like, I don't know if the people at the head of this or in charge of these things or in the whatever are realizing that you can only jerk around people so long yep. before they're going to be like, I'm just not paying. I might as well have cable or oh, something. I, like- I, I heard something that'll really get your gears going. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I forget which game company said it, but, uh, or was even had the audacity to mention it. They were talking about um, charging you by your playtime. Whoa. What? Yeah. Uh, and I think the conversation was like around like GTA 6, like if they did that or something. And Jeez. Could you? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> no. What? Like, because then you don't own, you don't own your, your media. You don't yeah. own your games. Yeah. You don't own well, your that's, movies. Well, that's and... the evolution of games as a service. That's the evolution of a live service dynamic. And that's the thing yeah. with Suicide Squad is they... In their heads, their misguided heads, they thought that, oh, we'll put, we'll put together such a product that they'll buy it and they'll play it, and then we'll get them on the live services, and we'll get them on the, the, pa- the battle passes and all the other things that they'll pay to play. But yeah. when you put out a below-standard game in an environment crowded with online, and it's an online-only. Suicide Squad is only yeah. online-only. And that's be, unfortunate, because it dis- would be you, better if it was single-player. Yeah, but. you have to connect to the internet to play the game. It's a live-service game. Yeah. And no, so many people were just like, no, we're, we've had enough. Yeah. People were reviewing this thing and hate reviewing it. And actually, they didn't get it, it didn't get released on. It didn't get released for reviews. They actually held it and didn't like, allow ga- gaming companies and magazines to review it because they knew what the junk it was. Yeah, and that's never a good sign. Yeah, never a good sign. And so then people start reviewing it, and they're just like getting all defensive. And it's like, no, you put together a junk game. You, I'm paying money for this. Like... It's a there's a growing sentiment among gamers where it's just like this is insanity. Why are we doing this? Why is these companies are worthless? They're not they're not interested in actually produce most companies. Some companies like Larian Studios with Baldur's Gate 3, incredible. Solid game, solid efforts. And there's been games, but overall it just feels like we are we are being taken advantage of. And it was actually I think it was Amazon. Somebody in either Amazon or somebody said, "You don't own your media." You will never own. You will not. Our our goal is to make you so you can't own physical media. You won't own your. That's crazy. And it's <laughs> like you can only do that so much. I think much. Ubisoft says something similar to that. Yeah, too. they did. And that's the thing is, is that you don't know how much power consumers still have over your company. Uh, they just we, we destroyed the day the day what was it the day before the day yeah after, the day before day before's game like fantastic. It's gone. It's done. That that studio shut down within seventy two hours. Yep. She- because of all the refund requests and the bad press and just how slammed they got and the lawsuits that were threatened because they had advertised a feature didn't show up in the actual game. Irma. Several features, actually. So I I think they think we'll just go along like sheep. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? I have a book. I can re- I can go and I have physical <laughs> books in my office. I have a stack of physical books. I'm going to go read my physical copies of my yeah. books <laughs> And I'm going to tell you and to take your poorly written shows, your poorly produced content, and your poorly produced games, and you can shove off. I'll do my thing. <laughs> See you later. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. You can Bye. take my money and suck. Like, you can just done. Like, I'm over. Like, it gets me angry. I'm like, I am a 41-year-old person. I, you don't get to treat me like this. Fair. You are a company I've paid good money to for years. Yeah. And mm. this is what you... Mm, child, you don't know what you're in for. <laughs> Bye. I will. I will. We will. We will break up. We will break up. It's. 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 it's it, yeah. The drama. The yeah. It's, so a yeah. Break I just, up. Huh? It's just a weird thing to say. <laughs> but people, p- gamers are. They're breaking yeah. up. Like PS Five is in its like. See, it's in its sundown. Yeah, they're latter stages. Yeah, latter stages say. of the gaming console. So that means about they got about four or five years left. Right. Hmm. And so then they're going to start to. Pr- pr- they, and so then they're going to put together the PlayStation Six. And then you got to buy all your games again. And I'm like, I just got the Xbox Series X. Yeah. God, there's, let there's, me let me enjoy it, please. Yeah. And oh, the thing about Xbox, like, they are now putting some of their exclusive games. Yeah. Xbox Series X doesn't have very many yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to begin with. 
They're going to put them on other platforms. On PlayStation, yeah. On PlayStation and Nintendo. Yep. And it's like... Yep. There's what, no... What do we get? Like, yeah. what is, why do I have an X? Like, and they're still saying, like, oh, no, we're not giving up on the consoles. Right. We're still going to make new consoles. In fact, this next one's going to be the largest technical leap you've ever seen in video games. Right. Which they always But, say. like, why? Like, if Fable comes out yeah. and it goes to Sony... Yeah. I'm going to be PO'd. Right. <laughs> like, give me something. Like, yeah. Well, I think we're approaching that point of like, because I, I've, I have not. We have a PlayStation Four upstairs. We only use it for like DVD watching movies. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't play any games on it. I play it on my PC. I, that's, that's what I do. Um, I've never wanted to go. And back. you get all the Xbox games. <laughs> yeah, you do on your PC. And you, you get PlayStation games too now. Yeah. I think there's, there's, there's. A critical situation, a critical identity crisis, both in movies and television shows and gaming companies, where they've they've took it, they've taken it too far, and people are like, "We're done." Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I don't want to pay you exorbitant amount of money a month for nothing for a service that doesn't deliver. Like Netflix pulls shows off of Disney Plus, like, "Oh, we're putting it back in the vault." There is no need for a vault. You own oh, the they've servers. Had that, they've had that around. The Disney vault's been around for yeah. forever. But it's yeah. like it's that same story with others, like Paramount. Paramount Plus, God bless them. They're in discussions with moving Star Trek to another, to another, to like either CBS or Peacock or some. But it's like we we we're 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 gonna get tired of it. And we're gonna not stop, we're gonna stop watching your shows because <coughs> it's too much energy. It's too much time, and money is money. Like, <coughs> I'm not made of money. No one's made of money. I mean, some people are, but we're not. <laughs> the everyday American consumer is not gonna put up with this for very much longer. They're gonna be like, okay, cool, I'm done. We cut the cord for a reason. Cable went away because it was too expensive and you couldn't you couldn't choose your options. But then what you did is you made all your streaming services. They got they got greedy. Mm-hmm. Netflix was the way in the future. Ooh, we're gonna do our own services. And it's like Yeah. Pick a lane. It used to be eight dollars. Yeah. And now it's <laughs> upwards of sixteen, seventeen dollars. Yeah. Uh-huh. They're almost all twenty now. It's like yep. ridiculous. And so it's like we're people are gonna people are gonna they're gonna have to cut the cord with inflation and everything else. It's like well, I can't afford to pull twenty bucks once a month for you because I've already got another twenty buck offer on this service and I got this over here and I got that over here and I gotta pay this to here. Well and then Netflix had to do this thing where because a lot of people were sharing it like families. Yeah, no, oh password, everywhere is cutting pass, that off. Password crack crack yeah. down so kicked annoying. off. Yeah, it's like, well, I'm paying you money, like, like you're old. still getting paid. Like, well, <laughs> and what's funny is, is that you know, like years ago, Netflix kind of like made fun of it, but also encouraged password sharing. Like, yeah. oh, yeah. love is sharing your Netflix password, and then five years later, it's like, well, <laughs> just kidding, we're losing money, and it's like, well, put out a superior product. Don't put pu- put out junk that, like, we we one night we wa- we we searched through Netflix, couldn't find anything really worth watching. Yeah. It was like, where's... Zoe and I pay for Netflix, but that's mostly because her dad watches it. Yeah. Which we... he's realizing that Netflix series, he's like, why do they never finish them? Yeah, they he'll, just get, like, he'll get into a series and yeah. then like realize that it got canceled, like yeah. season two. Yeah. He's like, it was so good. Why do they do that? And I'm like, well, Netflix. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, Zoe and I don't watch Netflix. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we haven't. We've, we've, we've been down about we've a month and a half, two been months. Because yeah, there's it. like the yeah. random exception, like The Crown. Yeah. That we'll get into, or Stranger but the Things. Crown, the Crown ended. And Stranger, yeah. when Stranger Things come back, they're I mean, ba- basically may, done. Maybe I'll I'll watch it. Maybe I'll re up our Netflix. But it's like just for that. I just, no, I'm not. I'm, I don't want again. I don't want to pay for a service for just one show and then cancel. Like either make me make my media affordable and available to purchase and own, or don't. Yeah. And I think that's that's. Or just have one freaking streaming. Yeah. <laughs> or go service. back to the days of cable where it's just one yeah. one login. I mean, honestly, again, it's weird to say this. It's such a weird moment to say I would give me pay me. I pay a hundred dollars to have access to everything. Yeah, give just give me a flat rate, lock it in, and you can get your money. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is they'd have to negotiate with each other to make sure that they get paid their residuals and all mm-hmm. the other things. And so it would end up being the cost of cable again. <laughs> Basically, you're paying a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars to have access again. And it's like we have not won a thing. Nothing was earned here. No. <sighs> get off my lawn. <laughs> Longest oh, tangent ever. Oh my gosh. So there you go. If you're listening and you agree, or you're listening and you disagree, feel free to email us. You're wrong if you disagree. Yeah. <laughs> you just, you just, you done wrong. You done, you done messed up. Uh, email us at adelayedteacher at gmail We're happy to hear from you and happy to engage you in your 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 yes or knowing. Um, my guess is there's a lot of yesing probably going on out there in the audience mm-hmm. right now, being like, "Yeah, this is dumb." Like, mm-hmm. <sighs> what should we watch next? Oh, that's, that's right. That's a great question. Oh. 
I haven't thought of it far ahead. I haven't even. Let's make it a mystery. Let's 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 so yeah. Let's let's let's, let's we'll contemplate off air, and we'll uh, we'll we'll be ready. So next week, Howard the Duck. Oh shit! No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> the guys, the guys that, laughed, and the girls went. <laughs> that that might have to be like our April Fools. Like we'll tell everybody that we're like watching uh, Forrest Gump or something. Right. And really, we'll come in and start talking about Howard the Duck. <laughs> Let's Got do the him. opposite. Let's say we're talking about Howard the Duck and then like pull in Forrest Gump or something. <laughs> and like, wait a second, this plot doesn't match. Well, we, what, something we might do, and we'll talk about this at some point. We might want to do like once a month to do like a black and white feature, mm-hmm. like one week, one like the third Friday, the third the third weekend or whatever. We would pick up a black. And oh, white I movie. have an idea for mine. Okay. Hopefully, because though you're not a big black and white, but maybe you've seen this one or maybe you would like it. Young Frankenstein. Love Young Frankenstein. I got him into it. Yeah, I saw the play. It's good. Well, yeah, he's only. I reference it a lot in conversation when I'm talking about me transitioning from a classroom teacher to a music teacher. Mm. It very much for me mirrors his journey yeah. as a character. Where where did you get that brain from? Somebody named Abby Normal. <laughs> what? Are you you, prom- you know he's like I promise you promise won't be mad at me. I promise I won't be mad at you. You promise you won't yell. I won't oh, yell. He yells. I, I yell and he's like, where did you get the brain? Uh, so an Abby Normal, and he goes, "Who Abby Normal? An Abby Normal, Abby Normal brain?" And he's like, "Are you telling me I put that you I put <laughs> an abnormal brain in a six, seven, <laughs> six foot seven, <laughs> three hundred pound is killing like machine?" He's slamming his head or something at that point, <laughs> and, he's, no. and he's he's just shaking. He's, he's like, shaking him. Okay. Ah! It's classic. My my well, the line that I will reference, and then we'll close out the episode is, um, he's he's the guy. One of the I think it's Igor. He's like, could be worse. How? Could be raining. raining. <laughs> that is the best. And he just looks over at Igor. <laughs> Sorry. I just love how his eyes pop out like yeah. that. <laughs> I like when they see all the different skulls and the different brains. And you see Igor and he goes, hey! And he just kind of jumps. <laughs> Such a good movie. It is. It's so good. All right. Well, on that note, uh, my name is Aaron. My name is Vicky. I am Happy Phil. <laughs> and I'm Zoe. And this has been Nerds by Screenlight. We'll see what we do next week. Thanks for listening to this double header. Nope, double feature. Oh my God. Aaron. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> I got nothing left. Uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Have a good rest of your week. Bye-bye. And keep watching movies. Keep watching and hold on to your physical media because they're coming to take it away. Bye. Yes. Bye. 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 The raspberry flapovers will be out in a moment. <laughs> the kitchen is closed. You've been listening to the Nerds by Screenlight podcast, presented by Create at Morgan Productions, located in Fort Morgan, Colorado, USA. For more information on our production house, other podcasts hosted here, and further details, please visit www.createatmorgan.org. You can find us on Twitter at the handle Create at Morgan. Create at Morgan is a school club at Lincoln High School, our alternative education campus in Morgan County. Our sponsor is Aaron DeLay, the language arts teacher at Lincoln. Send any feedback to a delayed teacher at gmail.com. Thank you for listening to our podcast.